Thank you so, so much. Um, first of all, thank you everyone for coming. This is the biggest treat in the world to, to come to B&H where I think that we all know it's, you know, like it feels like a second home to, you know, all of us gearheads. And uh, thank you so much uh, for inviting us. And we hope that this will be a class that you'll be able to come away with something that's very tangible and very real that, that you'll be able to take from what we're doing and bring to your work. Um, so, you, uh, I'm Hannah, as you said. I'm Label. Um, and I want to share with you how we got started in photography, just as a quick introduction to who we are and um, why we do what we do. Um, so, which actually started with Label's story because he was in photography first. So, when I was in college, I was doing like a like an overall general studies, and I spent a lot of time traveling with my university. And I got into archaeology. So like archaeology is like the coolest thing in the world until you have to like wake up every morning at five o'clock and dig till the end of the day, and then you wake up the next morning five o'clock and just dig for the rest of the day, and then you wake up and it's just like a never-ending cycle. So what what I decided to do is we, we had the professor Chris, uh, I studied under Christine Delentia, um, who was the professor of photography at the university, and she came to all of our excavations. So I said, let me ask you a crazy question. Can I just like take classes with you and then like let everyone else dig and I'll just take pictures of them digging? So I have a camera, right? She's like, if you want to do that, you can do it. So it was like a great experience. I could like basically wake up whenever I wanted to and then go photograph people digging. I got to still see all the cool stuff that they found and then I got to hold it and touch it and play with it and photograph it and learn how to learn all the basics of my camera. So we got to do um, quite a few excavations in Israel, uh, South America, Peru, so, so that's where I started learning, and from there, I decided what I was going to do was just do small events by myself, and it was a way just to make some side money. So when we got married, um, I think actually right before when we were engaged, Label said to me that he was thinking maybe we could work together. I studied interior design at Parsons, which is here in the city, and um, I really have a craving for creativity. and kind of in a different way than some artists. Like I'm, I don't like to sketch or draw, and uh, much to label chagrin, you, you know, even though I told him I could draw, I don't. And a second day, she tells me, oh, I'm an artist, I'm a this, I'm a that. So I'm like, that's like cool. She can like draw things and like do things. I can do that. It'll take me 12 hours. She but. told me, we saw a picture, at the, we were on a date. She said she saw like a beautiful thing. She said, I could do that. I said, you can't do that. She said, I could do it. I was like, okay, cool, she could do it. Like, that's cool. And then like, and then, like I was like waiting and waiting and waiting. I was like, she said, I could do it. I'm not going to do it, but I could do it. So. <laughs> You don't have 12 hours anymore. So, um, so, so I said, that's OK. You, know, you have your thing. You can do photography. I have my thing. I'll do interior design. And um, basically, the short version is that when we got married, um, he went to do a 90th birthday party, which is just a small thing in the afternoon on a Sunday. And I said, OK, I'll go. I'll carry our bag. We were just married. I wanted to hang out with him. And it was, I had a camera, and I took pictures, and mine were good, too. <laughs> and so we kind of just took it as an opportunity to say, like, let's, let's spend some, some time together. Let's um, kind of use this as, a, as an opportunity to grow together and to communicate. And working together, you know, some couples will really say that they can't do it. And it, you know, it has these difficult moments, but you learn a whole new element of communication. We always say that when we're, you know, when you're at a wedding, this a lot of times it's a very high pressure experience, and like you just have to learn that you have to communicate, you have to, you have to learn each other's language, and from there. Even if you're not married to them. Yeah, right. So like, right. So, so, so anyway, so, so, so what we did was for the first six months, we. It actually was really inspiring, because when I was preparing for this class, I connected to one of my mentors, uh, Sal Sincata, who we were, I'll tell you the story. So, so basically, what I was thinking about, I realized, after we decided we were going to shoot a little bit together, I said, Hana, why don't you spend the next six months educating yourself? You have all the foundations of art, composition, color, everything. You just need to learn how to use the camera. So the beginning, I gave her like assignments, okay, we're going to start working with aperture, we're going to start working and understanding the basics of what was going on in the camera. And then slowly but surely we just found dedicated classes that were going to teach us different parts of photography. And when I sat down when I was planning this class, I realized when I was, we were sitting there six years ago, 
And I decided I'm going to take people's information, I'm going to ingest it, and we're going to make it our own. And what I realized was that that's what brought us to the, to the studio that we have now. And when I realized that I was going to be able to, in this class, we're going to be able to give back to other photographers to give them pieces of information that are very tangible, that you guys are going to take these things and you're going to, you're going to run with them. You're not going to, we have seven points that we always use in our photography when we're showing up to any location, but it stemmed from a lot of like very offensive looking places. Um, <laughs> and, we, and we're going to give you those seven tools. And I'm excited to see what you guys cr create from them. But what I realized was these types of classes, the education you guys are putting yourselves through now, is going to lead you to just like incredible things. So let me lead to just the next slide. This is um, our business name is Label Schwartz Photography. We gave it his name so that I could sneak out whenever I need to. <laughs> we do have young children, so um, I do that sometimes. Um, our email website and Facebook and Instagram is where we are socially. So you're welcome to reach out to us um, if you want to talk more later or check out what all of our work looks like. Um, so what we as you guys know, we, um, we want to talk about what to do when you're in an ugly hall. And the kind of behind the scenes version of that question is that you need to build a portfolio for whoever your ideal client is. And it's a little bit tricky to do, unless your ideal client gets married in ugly places, it's a little bit tricky to do that when you're still in those places. Hi, Graham. <laughs> it's my grandmother. She's the best. So anyway, so. Um, so, so what we decided to do is we realized like it's a, it's the biggest conundrum. How are you going to come to a client and say like our goal is always to shoot at country clubs, but how are you going to come to you're shooting in small dingy places and you're, now you're trying to get a client that is whatever your ideal client is. How do you represent to them that you can you're capable, confident, and able to to create these images when you don't have anything to show for it? I just want to give a disclaimer to the, the places where we're talking about that some of them are uglier than others. Some of them, <laughs> and even if they're ugly, we understand that there's budget restrictions, there's uh, you know, location restrictions, just where people needed to get married. And we, we totally get why people got married there. But we wanted to create the best that we could, even if it's not the ideal place. So what we did was we went to the drawing board and said, kind of, if we're going to make this happen, what we have to do is make a game plan for success. We have, to, we have to know that every wedding that we walk into, no matter where it's going to be, we're going to be able to come out with our work, something that you can look at and say, oh, I know who shot that. Right? Someone's hiring you. You're a professional. You have to be able to create consistency throughout everything that you do. When people, one, of my, one thing I love is when people come to us and they, after, you know, we, about three to four weeks after the wedding, we tell them, we tell our couples about six, four to six weeks after the wedding, we'll have you guys in and we have like really fun, you know, we serve some pain and we have, like my wife makes yummy treats, anyone that's hungry, she made some up here for you guys. Um, so anyway, but we try to do it in about, you know, two to three weeks, we have to try to have them in. And like often they say like, like, whoa, like that's not, like how did you see that? Like what was, what was going on? And basically what you have to do is you have to, what we found was you have to be able to use our, whatever, we decided these are our seven techniques that we're going to use to transcend their origin. You don't know, you could be anywhere, and a lot of the images uh, that we're going to show you, you could be anywhere, and like you could be anywhere, and it's just like stunning, in our world we think it's really stunning work, um, but it doesn't really <laughs> represent, uh, you can give us your own opinion, um, but it doesn't represent exactly where it was, it was shot. Um, we also like to try our best to get it right in camera, and what I mean by that is that um, I'm not against Photoshop or creating an image to be better than it is, but I'm, our, our style or preference in the work process and the workflow is not to create images that need to go into Photoshop. I would rather get it right in the camera, get it right in putting in the lighting, putting in the location, moving someone a little over, fixing the hair. And it's just incredible how one little second in real life can save you so much time later. And um, so when we were first working together, 
that was something I said. I was like, label, if you don't get it right, I'm just not giving it to them. I'm sorry. It's not good. I say, like, how do you do it? Like, don't worry. She's going to Photoshop it. It's going to be good. She looked at the label. If it's not perfect, they're just not getting it. Like, you just learn how to be a better photographer. Just like, or that's it. Like, just figure it out. Um, so the goal in in our techniques is to create consistency because when you're a professional photographer, you have to be able to do a good job no matter where you are. Um, whether it is a country club or somewhere that's not as ideal, whether it's a dark place, a small place, a large place, high ceilings, low ceilings, um, multiple rooms, um, whatever all the variations are, you have to just be able to create it again and again um, in order for people to be able to trust you and to be able to rely on you. So that's where we got our seven techniques. And we, these are the seven techniques that we, we go into, and they're basically our checklist. When we, when we go in, we say, OK, these are going to be our seven, our, seven, our seven ideals. And it's actually been more and more fun since we were preparing the class and the recent events we've shot. It's like we're like, you know, whenever we're taking, whenever we're creating an image, like we like look to each other like, oh, that's number four. Like, oh, that's like own it. Or like whatever it's going to be. It's like been more fun as we, it's always been in the back of our mind and something that we've worked with. But as we've been developing the course, it really has gotten more and more real for us, which is what we're hoping is going to happen for you guys. You guys are going to take these notes and you guys are going to be able to apply these things. And it's, it's, it's really been, it's really been fun. Creating risk. Yeah. Oh, so one thing that I've always said, you guys, I'm sure you guys heard this, like, you know, like people are like, well, listen, if you just take like a hundred pictures, there's bound to be like two good ones, right? So the answer is no. Like, we all know people have taken hundreds of pictures and never taken a good one, right? And we always find that it's either the first one or the last one. Right. You either got it or you just keep going till, oh, finally got it. And then you don't have to take any more, right? Because that's because then you can move on to the next thing. So what I was what I, what we like to look at is we're not taking pictures. Like there's not just like we're not taking pictures, we're creating photographs. It's the difference between being intentional and not being intentional. We're deliberately choosing whatever we're going to be choosing to create the photograph that is on our mind. Um, so that's what we're gonna be talking a lot about when I say creating photographs, we're going to be talking about those things, how you create the image where you see something, create it, and now it's, now it's real. So now we're going to get into those seven techniques. Are you guys ready? <laughs> I hope you guys are ready. And they're the best. Oh, I'm the best. Just, ask my just ask my grandmother. Right. OK. So oh, go back for a second. So you got to find your happy spot. Your happy spot is like, the happy spot is like, the happiest spot you're ever going to find, right? When you find your happy spot, like you just know you made it. And what we say, what we mean by the happy spot is we always try to show up a little bit before our event to look around to find our happy spot. Now, the happy spot is different for me than it's going to be for you. And we're going to describe to you what a happy spot is. Then we're going to describe to you what our happy spot is. But it's not going to be particularly your happy spot. But the foundations are going to be true no matter who and what you're doing. So. What we're going to do is we're going to be looking for a happy spot. I don't know, um, maybe hit the, hit the next thing. Well, I just want to say that um, I think this is a little bit what you just said, but that these techniques can, you can use, I think, to create your style and to hone them in to create your work. This happens to be what our style is, and we use the techniques. We developed them to get to this point. But I think if you just tweak each one, because our happy spot is going to be different than your happy spot. That means that place where your images just come alive, and that's what your images look like. That's where you want them to be. That's what you want to show in your portfolio. And um, so that's e that, I think that that's kind of an easy one to see. Ours is one thing, and yours is going to be another, because everyone has a different perspective. So the happy spot is, describe to you what a happy spot is. The happy spot is that location where it doesn't even have to be big, right? Because you're shooting in, a, in the reason why we're in this class. What? Oh. We're going to arrive early to scout locations. And the reason why we're in this class is because, right, we're in less than desirable places. So it doesn't matter if 97.2% of the place is ugly. There might be something that's redeeming. And even if there's not something that's redeeming, you can find something that you can make redeeming, right? So what we're going to do is, for us, we like clean, simple, unadorned walls. We, we always tell people, just give us a blank wall and we're good. Right, that's our happiest place. Because 
again, some photographers really like to add a lot of elements into their image. To us, we're photographing a couple, a relationship that's happening between two people. And whatever's in there other than them is distracting. Um, but that's obviously just our... We focus very much on our, our subjects. and So most of the time, that's a couple. Um, they are really, in our world, the focus of a wedding. Um, some people may agree or disagree. The families are also important. The individuals, of course, are important. But the couple is why the wedding is happening in the first place. And um, you know, they're there to get married and to start their life together. <coughs> so that's why we like to focus on that. Um, so, so anyway, so what we're looking for is we're looking for clean surfaces. We're looking for anything that's seamless. I think you'll see throughout throughout what we do is um, is is just a clean situation. So what you need to do is, oftentimes what we're looking for is just one spot. It doesn't need to be that big, right? What we do is we're looking for one wall that is that is consistent, and that we can place our bride, groom, or couple in in and create the experience, right? Because if it's uh, obviously, the bigger it is, the more you have to work with, and the wider you can go. But sometimes they just don't give you that. Sometimes you just don't have that. So these are things we're looking for. We're looking for unadorned walls, um, natural soft uh, light reflectors. We want to be away from other people because, like, the last thing you need is to have your like couple ready, and then like Aunt Myra comes, and like all of a sudden she's like kissing her and putting makeup all over her face, and and like she's just not focusing on you. So you want to find something that's just far away. Like, like we're oftentimes behind the wedding hall. We're like in anywhere other than where you're going to be. Not you, but like the <laughs> proverbial whoever you are that I don't want to be there. We're going to be as far away from you as we're going to, as we can be because we want their focus. And especially if you're going to be uh, sh shooting the way we do, is very much about emotion and and connection. And anything that draws away from the connection is is a distraction. So we like continuous backgrounds. And by the way, I was educated by my wife. So like, I don't really have an opinion, but I was just like told by opinion, and I totally agree some, with it. Some things. Yeah, meaning, uh, I'll tell you guys a funny story. I don't know if my wife wants me to tell the story. So when we first got married, so I, uh, so my wife like, is an incredible cook. So she made some delicious supper. So I tasted it, and I said, kind of this is delicious. She said, it needs salt. I said, it does not need salt. She said, it needs salt. I said, I'm telling you, it does not need salt. She said, Label, just put some salt on it. So I did it for you. Yeah, kind of. I said, Hannah, it needed salt. Like, this, this, that needed salt. So, over, so basically, over our relationship, we've been teaching, my, teaching me how, how we've it's. We've been teaching each other. It's true. There are things, and I'll, right, we're teaching me, we've been learning what, uh, how much salt things need. And also, I mean, I've been educated about um, the things that, um, the, the things that, that really um, speak true to our work. And, and, and um, but again, as a disclaimer, it's not for everyone. So we're going to be looking for continuous background um, outside the norm. We are not going to be shooting where Oops. everyone else shot, because everyone else did that already. right? So that's one of the things I think is the strongest. Your vision is going to be your story. So if you're not shooting, if you're shooting where everyone else is, you obviously can use other elements. But one of the things is know that you're not bound to exactly where everyone's shooting. Go anywhere. You're, right? you're that, today's your day. And then you have to keep our architectural line straight. When you marry, <laughs> if, if you're going to decide to use something that's a little busier or a little bit more uh, gorgeous, stunning, wow, I got this building, house, church, castle, whatever it is in the background, or panels on the wall, you have to keep them straight. <laughs> that's what happens when you marry an interior designer. Everything's got to be like this. Good. So this is our happy spot. Um, we were shooting this wedding, um, and we it happens not to, it happens to be a, a nice hall. Um, I have to say that because our clients are actually in the room. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, so it was it was a very nice hall, and it was the best clients ever, um, which is actually just <laughs> so anyway. That's but true. that is true. But anyway, so the point the point being that um, nothing for us, everything is like very adorned, right? And like just for us, like we couldn't find anything until all of a sudden. My wife goes to the restroom, and she comes back out, and she says, label the women's bathroom. Which was, which was, by the way, in that half hour, we were looking around and trying to find that right place. Label the women's bathroom is gorgeous. 
<laughs> right? Women's bathroom is gorgeous. I was like, uh, <laughs> I'm like all, right, all right, okay, right? Uh -huh. And so, so anyway, so I said, okay, I guess I, we're going to go check out the women's bathroom. <laughs> By the way, guys, you don't understand. The women's bathrooms are always way nicer. <laughs> they have couches. They have things. You didn't know they have couches, right? So anyway, so that's the situation. So anyway, so, so, so that's what happened. So what we did was um, we set up in the women's bathroom. And the funniest part about it was we actually have our videographer here in the room. So we are totally not geeky. Like, we're not geeky. We're, like, totally not geeky. And our, and our video team is the most incredibly geeky, wonderful like people. Whenever I have a gear question, I call them, even if it's like 11 o'clock at night, and like they're excited to schmooze about it. So they have these little things that, like walkie-talkies, that go in their ear. You know what I'm talking about? And like, and like talk to each other at any point in the wedding, which is very cool. But like, you know, I only would and have. Practical. Yeah, and practical. I was only have one ear. So for me, I'm like, you know, like I'm hearing that, whatever. So anyway, so you hear these guys, the video, whole video crew. Ellie, to the women's bathroom. <laughs> Dave, to the women's bathroom. Anyway, so everyone's going to the women's bathroom. And um, so anyway, that's what we shot, because that was the one place we found a clean, continuous uh, background, as you're going to see here. So um, before label, I think it was him saying that you don't have to shoot in the same place where everybody else tells you. And um, you know, sometimes you show up to the type of venue that we're discussing, and they'll say, the manager or the person running the event will say, um, the photography room is over there. This is where people take pictures, and um, yeah, you're good. Just set up. <laughs> <laughs> so we go, okay, perfect. I'll uh, shoot over there. Um, and the point is, you don't have to follow the rules. You don't have to stay in the box. You can let your feet dangle out. We always say, you got to, a oh, great mentor of mine once says, you got to stay in the box and let your feet dangle out. So that's, that's that idea. Good. So we kind of talked about the women's bathroom, but um, now we're up to the women's bathroom. We want to show you we've actually been there a few times, and um, it's really the anteroom to the bathroom. You know where the the lounge people call it. So it does have a couch in it, um, and a mirror, beautiful large mirror. So here I am setting up our beautiful bride, and the reason we chose that location was because it fit what our version of beautiful is, is just a simple, clean, classic photograph that um, you know, we hope will be timeless. And we have fun, <laughs> like Label said. That's our video crew. So in the same venue, again, we didn't go in the typical um, spot where family portraits are taken. And we actually, you know, we were looking around and we're trying to find the best place and family you need a bit more room than the bathroom allows. <laughs> so we're looking around we, and there's actually a very nice wall on kind of like next to the entrance of this hall. And it's great except for every wedding you're there, it's always in the sun. And this just doesn't, it just doesn't work. It's, it's direct, also in the beginning. direct sun. And it's also in the front of the hall where it's where people not are coming in. where we want to be. So what we decided to do was like scouting and scouting and scouting, can't find anything, really don't want to shoot by like the flowers or whatever. And like I, I go all, it's in an industrial area. So I go like all the way around like all the industrial stuff. And in the very back of the hall, there's this like gorgeous white wall. So like to me, that's like everything. And when you tell the client, like, we're going to meet you in the back of the hall, like, come, sh like, schlep with Office me for 20. The right. And they, like, see it. And, like, you, like, tell them how beautiful it's going to be, like, whatever. And then, like, you get them there, and they're like. But it's the size of a building. Right. They're like, it's a wall. Like, like you came for this? And I'm like, wait, just let me show you. So, um, so that was another benefit of it, is that it is the entire building that just has this beautiful stucco. So it fits the whole family. Um, so five and a half years ago is when we shot this, this wedding, and I'm not vouching for how these photographs look anymore, but the one on the left we used for our marketing for many years um, because we just felt it portrayed the clean and classic and timeless beauty that we love. Um, now I will tell you that it is not edited properly, and it could be that it wasn't photographed in the proper lighting because it was just natural light. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it has the same principles and rules that we follow now because that was naturally what we are drawn to. Um, and in that, this is also, again, it's the outside wall of the venue. Um, 
after the side posts you kind of see on the right picture are the windows and doors, which aren't necessarily um, very fancy ones. Just happens to be that that little spot and the floor is kind of nice. It's a um, it's a nice stone. So so that's that's our happy spot there. But where we should where we're where, told to shoot where the normal place is is inside by the flowers with the background, and instead of this, oh, we shot that instead of this. Um, which is where we did the family. Right. <laughs> so now you guys see where we're told to shoot, and I just like you just can't. Um, so this is, but you know, obviously when there are family members that don't want to, you know, travel to wherever you want to take them, or when they just are very insistent that that's where things should be. So obviously you have to shoot it. Um, this was six years, six and a half, five and a half years ago, but um, but now we try to do a little better. But but this is where we're supposed to be. <laughs> um, okay. So another another place of the happy spot of finding something that fits your style and you can continually do is to, to create something that you can rely on. So um, one of the places where I do that is when we're photographing details like the bride's ring and her shoes and um, her jewelry is to use her veil. And it's something that I can do everywhere over and over again. And I love it because it's so consistent, it's so bridal, and it really takes no effort. Like that. There's the, the alternative would be to use a beautiful reflective surface or a nice floor or a nice um, tablecloth even, or um, the many abundant places. But often I find that in these halls where they're not as, uh, I, I hate to keep using the word ugly, but. Um, in, the, in the halls that we're talking about, um, often the places that are the prettiest are on the wall. It's an interesting thing, but a lot of the nicest surfaces are vertical, and um, you can't always put a ring on a vertical sur surface. So, so the veil is something that's consistent, and you can do it over and over again. Now again, what I want to tell you is what we're showing you is obviously not, I mean, it's, it's work that we love, but we're showing you examples of places that are less than desirable. So obviously if you have something great, use it. But if you're in a pinch, then that's where the veil comes in. Um, and again, we talked about our love of a continuous or simple, plain background. It just shows the, um, the element. So here she had her coach flats and her coach sneakers for dancing. Wait, but you didn't tell what? them where it was on. What? Was that it? was photo. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You know where this is? Um, I didn't create that background. It's a bar cart, which is just like, it was chipped and stuff. It just, it's incredible. All the time, we're like trying to figure something out. And my wife will say, like, I got it. We're like, what do you got? Like, I'm looking at where do you, what, do you, what exactly do you got? She's like, that. I was like, what about that? That's, what is that? She's like, watch this, and put it out, and it just it makes magic. You have to be able to see in the small details. This is a bar cart, you know, yeah, hi. and it's, you know, but if you use it in the correct way, if you find that happy spot, it doesn't have to be that big. It just has to be the big enough. The waiter's like, can I have that now? <laughs> <laughs> the shoes? Like, they're like, wait. Yeah, yeah, hold on. <laughs> um, so this is obviously not a wedding, but we have a couple pictures that are not weddings, just to show you um, what we, the best examples of what we're talking about. And this is at the High Line in New York, which is a couple blocks away. Um, and again, it's just It doesn't have to perfect. be, right, it's, it's continuous. So we were actually talking about this. Oftentimes we do something like something very clean, but any distractions for us are, 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 are exactly that distraction. But here, I think we felt it was enough, it was consistent enough that it didn't take you away from, from what was it happening in the image. It doesn't have to be solid. <laughs> this is also continuous. It means to say there's nothing, it's all, how would you, how would you describe it? it? It's continuous. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps going the same thing without breaking up into, OK, now there's a red wall, or there's a um, bridge in the back. or there's A like bridge in the back, yeah. Could you just get that sailboat in that picture? That's so nice. Right. Like, what about the couple? You're going to miss the couple. Um, this is a hedge. I was able to get him. That's old work, too, so don't mind the editing. Um, and this was so last minute we got called. We generally don't shoot for that many. My last minute it was like the day of. I yeah, think. like an hour before. We got called from like a friend that like sort of photographer. They like forgot to hire a photographer for the wedding. Like 
and so they called an hour before, like, oh yeah, they need pictures. So like, I went to shoot for a friend, and a and what happened was like I didn't even know who I was photographing. We really like to really make a connection with our couples, get to know them. We have questionnaires for them. We like really get to like make the relationship, and that's how we can get the emotions happening. And here I totally didn't have this. It was a second wedding, and we I like show up, and they're like, you have this room, and it was just like it was a it was a it was just a hotel room. And there was like stuff everywhere. And I was like, I told my assistant, like, quick, like, just like move everything. He's like, how about the picture on the wall? I was like, move it. He's like, how about this thing? Move it. And just move everything. So I have my little, little thing. So I have a big five foot octobox and a big pro photo umbrella. And then the couple like shows up and like, it's them. So like, I'm like, hi, like, my name's Label. Like, are like, how are you guys doing? They're like, good. I was like, I'd like to get to know our couples like beforehand, like, I didn't get a chance to talk to you guys. Can I have like 45 seconds to like hear like who you are? So he so he tells me he says well he says I, you know I've been chasing after her for a while and she she's always said no, but um, but she finally said yes. He said I met her about six weeks ago and finally two weeks ago she said yes. So I'm like, okay, like <laughs> all right, like all right. So he says no. I'm just kidding. He says my wife and she. It's a second marriage. It's a second marriage. My wife and um, and her were, were best friends for for 60 years, and I was best friends with her husband for 60 years, and they both um, left this world, and so we decided to to come together, mm -hmm. and it was like so powerful for me. I said I'm making this happen. So we moved everything away, and again we're dealing with you guys can imagine is just you know a few feet by a few feet. But to be able to create what to me is a very timeless image in, in a very small space gave me the opportunity to give something to them that I don't know, um, I think that they'll appreciate forever. Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah. here we want to make a point that you have to just make it work for you and you're not always going to get your perfect situation that you always dreamed about. But um, the image on the left is in, we photographed a wedding in an airport, which is obviously not an uh, ugly place. It's a beautiful um, rolling hills in the back with the, um, it's a small little airport um, with the runway and the hangars. So we photographed the family in the hangars, not because we don't love rolling hills, but because we find that it just creates a nice, like, easy, simple background where we can look at the people instead of the background. Um, and on the right, um, it's hard to say exactly why, why this kind of resonates with me, but um, I think it's the best we could get of finding it simple. You have no and idea. This, uh, this hall is like it's, it, like, it's very weird to be, to master the art of shooting in ugly halls. That means that like, you're always like, frustrated until like like you figure it out, but like it's it. But this whole like you walk in and like you have like this little thing, and then you like go down into the basement, and then it's just like this very long goes for like 200 feet, and it's only like this wide, so like it's just like very long and nothing's really happening. So the only redeeming quality is like and it's this. It's in the basement, so there's obviously not windows. Right, there's like nothing. So and then it gets shorter as it goes, like progressive progressively. So like. In the beginning, you're like, okay, not bad. Like, I could like bounce some lights, and then it gets like this. Like, by the end of the wedding, you're like, like by the, you're like, <laughs> going through this thing. It's like anyway, very frustrating. So anyway, so even though we are totally, that's not what we are going to be shooting in terms of our happy spot. It's the only thing we could find, and it was the only thing that was right. So anyway, so so you just got to make it happen sometimes. So anyway, so that's what we're. And this couple did happen to have kind of like a regal uh, element to them. Her her bridal stuff was kind of like a headdress. Look. That's cool. Um, good. So, this is a spot that's in a, a place that has uh, some nice things. <laughs> <laughs> um, but every time I go to photograph a detail here, I always go back to this wall. It's a little faux marble shel um, uh, fixed shelf that's you know, only like 12 inches deep and three inches wide, uh, sorry, feet, three feet wide. Um, but it has this nice wallpaper and it, they don't, they didn't put this anywhere else. It's just in this little anteroom where it's, where the, all the, like, not, like not even where the dresses go, but like where the dress remains go, all the papers and hangers and bags and stuff. And, um, 
Yeah, it's interesting. Sometimes they put coffee there, uh, but it's right, you know, right before where the bride gets ready. And this is the spot in the hall. So um, it just it photographs beautifully, and I took a piece of tape and put the boutonniere on the wall. Um, I actually left in the bottom image a little secret for you guys that we use, of all things, dental wax to stand the ring up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what you see in there when you're shooting on a macro lens. You're going to see it like it was huge, but it was a teeny tiny ball of wax. In general, you would take that out, obviously, afterwards. But for us, we wanted to give you guys like a little, a little tip. And uh, it's just incredible to see it standing up. So that's the secret. Um, good. So the second technique that we would use is creative lighting. Which Wait, did how like yeah. you guys got happy spot? Happy spot's good. Cool. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take a ton of questions at the end, so I uh, just want to make sure we got happy spot. Um, I'll go creative lighting. This, this is the, the lighting. We actually, it's interesting. We actually photograph as we actually photograph as two as one person, but we really uh, we, we're always shooting together. So therefore, my wife is Hannah is involved in composition, posing, all these things, and my love is lighting. Um, we are in love with our lights, and we can choose about gear and stuff like that. But in terms of creative lighting, creative lighting gives you the opportunity to do anything anywhere, right? Your, you can literally, it's your stamp that you can put on every one of your images. Um, if you have something bland, it, like, like I, to me, I always make the joke that like, like my lighting system is like MSG. You know, like, like it's gonna make everything taste good. It just doesn't give you a headache. But, um, <laughs> but, like, but that's like, you, this is creative lighting. Is you, you master this, you can take it anywhere, and now you have your style everywhere. Um, so we have a, a, a goal or an intention in mind when we're taking a photograph, and we know where we want our viewer to see where we want them to look at the photograph. Um, we're really talking about portraiture in, in the majority of cases in, um, in that. But we know where we want them to look, and therefore we create many similar images like this, where there's no question your eye goes straight to them. What, we're, what our goal was here, if you go back, um, what our goal is here is a lot of times what I realized, like, this was really what inspired the class, is that we, there was a lot of times we just couldn't, like, like I told you that 97% of places are like, is like bad and you can find 3%. So like sometimes like 3% is like, you can't find it. So like, what are you gonna do? So the only option you have to do is you have to find a way to get everything out. So and, what- and, and by the way, most people think that we would have photoshopped this, but like I said before, we want to create it in camera. So that's what we do. So if they say we want black, we say, oh, we uh, we do that in, in real life. Right, or, people, <laughs> right, people say like, oh, that's great. You're like really good at Photoshop. So our couples will show them, see, look what we just got. And they'll be like, whoa, where'd everything go? <laughs> you just turn the camera around and people like don't get it. Like, like the when basically what our technique is, is we just take, what we love is like big, soft, beautiful light that wraps around a couple. So we just take, there's actually, um, one thing you will see in Photoshop, this is something we do have to do in Photoshop, there's just a huge umbrella here. And they're actually inside the umbrella as close as they possibly can. And that's how we can create like this very uh, soft directional light. Um, is there literally like, you guys remember being in the, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, right over here. There's just a huge, huge umbrella and they're actually like sticking in. Uh, but what, what that gives us the ability to do is for one, to utilize all the power of our flashes. And also, it gives us the opportunity to um, to create this really nice fall off light that is something that we just we fell in love with. Um, this is an image that does not need. We actually didn't need to make the place. This was gorgeous. This was actually in the LACMA Museum in LA, and um, and it, you know the ones with all the lights and the, uh, the columns. Um, but we wanted something that was like a little more quiet, and something that was like a little like it's very busy there. So, so I went behind them, and the Pro Photo B ones have this like, it's it's a it's it's, it's, a, it's a round front, so it just creates this really beautiful like line. So those were the we, we realized that we just wanted a quiet kind of experience. So therefore, I went behind them, and and lit them to kind of forget everything else that was happening, and create that kind of like bubble of light for them. They put light on, on them the same light that's on the floor. Yeah, that's the same one. And that's on their faces. Uh, yeah, so it's coming from behind them, correct. 
the light, the question was the, the light on the couple is one light directly behind them, uh, which creates a rim around them and also creates the floor and the shadow below them. So, so two lights. This was one light. Uh, this was one light. Uh, oh, my go, back, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's so going to get dizzy, right? Everyone's getting dizzy. So, um, so it's one light. Um, I'm peeking from behind. And what we do is one of the techniques, um, I don't know if we wrote about it, but guys, the most incredible thing is utilize your modeling lights. When you, right, it's like it was a world changer for me when I started realizing that I can flip on, with, at least with our pro photos, you can flip on the modeling light. You can see, you can't always see on a bright day where it's going, but you can at least see where it is. So therefore, if I'm hiding behind, Hannah can see where I'm hiding and maneuvering. I'm right behind that black line. And you can see where it's going to hit your couple. So it's one light behind, I think, him that's illuminating them. And then the floor is just the, um, the spill off of, of, of that light. Um, here we, I'm going to talk about this because the first one I was photographing alone. Um, so we were in a hall and the only redeeming quality that I could find was, and I know my wife, so like it's not like we could find a bar on cart the, somewhere. On the left image. Yeah. Um, I couldn't just find a bar cart somewhere. Um, <laughs> what we did was they had this really nice reflective surface. So I take my love is the uh, five foot octobox. Profoto makes a five foot octobox. Um, and it's just, for me, it's like, I just, my happy place. Um, it's like my, it's like my portable happy place. Happy and so, place, not happy spot. <laughs> right, totally different, I guess, right? Uh, questions at the end, right? So then we'll talk about what that is. So anyway, so, um, so basically what we did was, um, same, same exact principle. I took the, my assistant was not happy with me, right? He's holding the, this like situation that's like five feet, right? He's holding the thing. And we just wanted kind of a directional light that would be able to black out. There was like people sitting back there and they're like, are we in your picture? I'm like, no. They're like, you're pointing it at us. How are you not in the picture? I'm like, trust me, you're not in the picture. So anyway, so um, just creating a uh, really directional light that's going to overpower everything and do exactly what I want it to do. Yeah, OK. So um, this image was actually done in a beautiful, um, beautiful location. But this couple is just a very special couple. They have like kind of cinematic, like just like a very special, right? So though we have a million beautiful images of outside gorgeous situation, I felt for him it, we needed something that was like a little bit more um, like cinematic or like a little bit more like felt for like, like felt from those like way back then. So anyway, so we took a one, one by three Octavox. Uh, brought it again nice and close for that for that fall off and just wanted to connect with him in a, in a special way to c come up with the image. So even though we're in a court, we're like, we're in just like a corner of a hotel, but since you can use your light to focus, we, this light is focusing on him, you don't notice anything else that's happening. <laughs> I like it better by you. Okay, so by intentional lighting, there's um, obviously different uh, routes that you could take to get to your end result. One of those is natural light, um, which I mentioned we did in the beginning, which uh, I think for us that may have been because that's what we knew. But there, and that's what we could afford. Yeah. <laughs> but there, is a, there, there are real ways to photograph with natural light the right way uh, in a really beautiful way. And now we're challenging ourselves to get back to that. I mean, I think that I think we became so fascinated with creating everything in terms of creating our light um, through 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 our gear that through our, through our flashes that now it's a pleasure to kind of go backwards and say no, like what's happening naturally, and then we can add on to it. In fact, we were um, we were actually photographing it recently. I was photographing with somebody else, and it was such a pleasure. They saw like, oh, that's a beautiful light coming into the room. And I was like, oh, I haven't thought about beautiful light coming in the room in a long time. I think to myself, where do I want the light coming from? And I just make it. But um, but these are the natural light that you have to keep your eye on um, to keep to keep keep yourself keep it up. So natural reflectors is one of the ways that you would um, really play up the natural light, uh, which we're not going into, but that's an idea we want you to realize is there. Silhouettes. Remember that. You know what we like to do is have like a checklist, not to stay boring and not to like make it like cookie cutter, but to know that if you get like sometimes you're photographing. I'm sure I don't know if you guys ever got this. Like you're photographing, you do something great, and you're like, now what? Like we just got a great image within the first 10 minutes, or whatever. Like, but like where do we go now? So it's nice to have that that handbook of like, okay, well we're gonna start off simple variety. Yeah, start off kind of like um, very natural, very like 
classic, and then and then just just do flow posing. But take your take your thing. So if I'm if I'm thinking and I'm gonna say, what are we doing? Oh, let's do silhouette. Let's let's get some let's get them walking, right? But, but it's your it's your few moves that you have to you have that are consistent that you don't look like, you know, that photographer is like, uh, you know, like they're like, so what next? And you're like. Do you have any ideas? Like, like they're like you right, and they're like we hired you. Like, we, like, like that's not what I paid you for. Um, so have those, have those, have those notes. And if you want, we can choose about what those things are for us. Garage door light is like my love, right? Uh, it's like, in fact, people always say like, like whenever I'm training new assistants, I'm like, guys, if I, it's like you need anything, just garage door light. Garage door light. I'm sure you guys, some of you may may know, may not know. It's like, it's like nature's gift to. Photographers basically you come to any location that is in a ton of sun. Uh, you put them in the door. Hopefully, if you can, close all the lights in the back. And what happens is um, the power the power of the light is so intense on your on your couple or on your subject that you can just um, you expose for the face or for whatever you want to do, and everything kind of falls into darkness. It's what we're trying to create. That's what we created. Um, physically, from from that image that we, the black image we saw earlier, it's just trying to mimic this garage door lighting. So you just put it in there, and it's like it's like a it's like an instant happy spot. Window light. Um, if I have to teach you about window light, then there's a serious issue. Put them by the window, turn them, and watch. One of the fun parts about about it is you can watch how the how everything's falling on their face, and it, it makes it a lot easier to, to to photograph when you have a, a real light source coming at them. And less light, which is um, kind of the idea behind our black images. Right. So light, I I love. You ever like you guys were home like you like take out your iPhone because like you're trying to like get to your room or whatever and all the things are off and then you start seeing shadows everywhere like you know what I'm talking about. Um, so like occasionally like I'll find myself like trying to find something in the bathroom and I don't want to like turn on the lights to upset everyone and so I like put on my little like little light. And like I see like all these shadows, and I go to like the toothbrushes, and they look like dinosaurs. And like and you like go down like big dinosaurs, and then you like go up they're, like little dinosaurs. You're like moving around. I don't know if I ever told my wife I do this. Um, so so anyway, so so don't tell her I don't tell her I do such things. But uh, but that's the geek in me that that um, that what's happening is you whatever the light is on photography right is photosynthesis when plants eat light. Photography is when you paint with light. You're painting with light over here. So therefore, whatever your focus wants. To be that's where you add you that's where you introduce your light. Whatever you don't want them to look at, just take the light off of it. So therefore, using we use big, soft, big, big reflectors. So if I if I like my background, I'm going to keep it more frontal and it's going to photograph my subject and the background. If I don't like that, it just I'm just turning it or I'm, I'm just turning it. So therefore, the light light fall off doesn't go there, right? If there's something in the interesting in the background, I'm going to add a small light to it just to emphasize it. I want you. I want to put your eyes in my photograph where I want them and not where I don't want them. And I'm going to do that intentionally through using light and using less light. In places I don't want you to see. You guys are not going to believe this. You start this, one. this so we're, this is that place where there's only one place of like good good wallpaper. We showed you, and I'm going to show you like you, right? If you're going to see, okay. So check this out. So we're like working with our couple, and I bring I bring them to the spot, and I say, okay, this is where we're going to photograph. And they're looking at me like, are you out of your mind? Like this is a janitor's closet. And I say, okay, so this is what we're going to do. So obviously, I can't photograph what's behind them because that's boxes, as you're going to see in a second. Um, just do it because I'm, I want them to see. It. <laughs> that's where we're photographing, right? So like, can you imagine? And you have to check out the floor too. Right. So check out the floor, right? But if you see right behind that, there's like this like interesting stone, which could be beautiful if it was the whole place and it was gorgeous, but it's really just concrete. And if it was stone. <laughs> and if it was stone, right? But so what we do is I say, okay, guys, back up a little more. They're like. Okay, and I'm like a little more, a little more. They're like, that's a box. I'm like, no, guys, just keep working we'll with it. We'll move me. the box over. Yeah, we're, so we're like moving boxes anyway. Anyway, so this is the janitor's closet. But for us, with creative lighting, you can create an image that to us speaks, you know, is 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 a, is a powerful creation. It's a difference between creating a photograph and taking a picture. This is in the same place, um, which. I mentioned does have a couple redeeming qualities. One is that little piece of wallpaper, and another is it has beautiful chandeliers. That's what we love about this place. Um, so in these images, uh, that's that's where we went with it. Is we just said like get rid of everything else, put them in the doorway, 
And oh, this is, this is, when I told you garage door light, this is it. He's just standing in the door, and, and this, is, this, is, this is totally it. Um, so he was an indirect light. He had this beautiful indirect light from the doorway. Um, we're able to black out the rest because the hall hasn't turned on other lights yet. I, we may have asked them to turn that on. Right. Um, and then position them where we wanted those bubbles to happen, which also is from our bokeh, which we'll talk about more about the gear later. Um, and then we did it with the bride as well, because um, in my mind, which may or may not be true, it's important for the album and even just for the whole wedding in general, I think that it should have a really nice fluid look. And when they match, like I said, especially the album where they're sitting there next to each other, but in the whole wedding, it should just, it should have a flow, it should match, it should um, look like it was a coordinated outfit because it was a coordinated wedding. Um, this is the real spot. This is where we're supposed to photograph. This is where we're told to photograph. We said, where are we shooting in the first time? And he said, this is where you're photographing. Right so next to it, there's a, a curtain that's where like the official family, family pictures happen. You have to do it, so we do. So um, like, it's really the only spot that fits a family. So uh, like, but right next to it is this. We're concrete. trying to like, I'm told like, okay, I, like I tell my sister, okay, stand here. We're gonna like do something with this thing, like I'm putting the light high and putting the light low and putting the thing, and I'm just like not getting it. So that's when you decide we're moving and even we're shooting. With, even with cool light, it still looks like a jail cell. Well, oh, that 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 um, garage that that um, janitor closet is two feet to the right. So that's our spot, two feet to the right. Um, so we like to think outside our box, uh, like showing you that we move away from necessar from where we're supposed to necessarily be shooting. So just like my wife will find a surface or a place that's beautiful, my mind wraps around light. That's like where I'm, that's where I love to be. So therefore, in our next image, um, what we did was we. Um, this is just the bride's getting ready in that room, and it's just like kind of like a quiet. Has, has a wonderful doorway. Um, which I didn't show in this image, but it's a really beautiful architecture. This happens to be a pretty place. Um, so it's, it used to be a house, now it's a wedding hall. And so there's a beautiful doorway there, but the reason why we're including it, even though it was a nice place, is that this is a three foot wide regular hallway. How are you gonna light that? How are you gonna light that door was closed with a by five the five-foot softbox. Yeah, like, like right, my happy label spot. Wants the softbox in there. Right, my happy spot doesn't even fit inside that place. So like, I don't know what I'm gonna, my happy place spot. Yeah. Right, we got it. <laughs> my happy place doesn't even fit inside. So anyways, like, how are you gonna do it? So I think to myself, hey, that's a room. Like, okay, and they're like, yeah, it's a room. I'm like, I need to open that door. They're like, I don't know if you can. So it's I run down. It's an office. That's a locked room. I run downstairs. I find the manager. I said, I need to get in a room. He said, what's wrong? I was like. I just need to get in this room. I said, we're gonna become friends. So he says, okay. So like he comes up, you gotta make friends with the manager. It's the most important thing. You go up to him, guys, this is important. Um, this isn't about ugly halls, it's about every hall. You show up and, and this is at least what I do. Um, I show up and I say, um, hi, my name is Label Schwartz. Um, do you have any rules? I really wanna be able to work with you and help you guys to do whatever you need me to do. I don't wanna you know, step on your feet. So then all of a sudden they feel like Oh wait, this guy is not like the photographer you should take over, but rather he's here to help me. So therefore they give you your seven rules, don't put tape on certain things, don't stand on chair, whatever they're gonna tell you, and then all of a sudden then you've created a friend. I do the same thing with videographers, uh, except for my videographer, they know me already. I go up to them, I say, hey, my name's Label Schwartz, I, we're gonna work together today. If you need anything, let me know. If I get in your way, just kick me, right? <laughs> and then they say like, Oh, no, like, that's okay. No, they're like, no, you kick me. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I will, right? But, but the point is that we like created the relationship. You want these vendors on your team. So anyway, so I run downstairs. I made the friends with the guy before. I said, I need in the room. He's like, why? Like, do you need something? I said, I just need to make the whole room a light. So basically, we have 500 watt seconds with our B1. So I basically just stood in this room and bounced Taunt as much light as I possibly could into that room, this and it created. This is why we actually said to think outside the box. This is why we're thinking we outside the box. Did not use the five foot. Fill the entire room with with light, and then what happened was this nice reflected light came back through a door, which is essentially just like a, I don't know, seven by three beautiful softbox, right? It's just reflected light coming from a big source. That's and your happy dot, not your happy. Spot. That's my happy dot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, so you got to think outside the box. You have to realize that you can create anything from anything as long as you just realize that you can you can right i was here photographing in like as you see like 
a school, right? Not like the most beautiful place, but what I saw was when I was looking around finding my happy spot, um, I saw this like this little, I was in here and the door was closed. I was in here and the door was closed. <laughs> but I'm gonna get it by the end, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be totally The screen's way better. Right. Um, I was in here and I saw like this thing. Now that's not enough light to photograph in anyone. That's there's just not enough light there. But I realized if I took, if I went to the hallway and blasted the same situation, blasted a million, however, 500 watt seconds towards the other wall, basically I was gonna create that 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 directional light, and I had my little you know thing framed from the window um, in that little door. So all of a sudden, I created a happy spot out of literally the entrance to the bathroom. Again, with the bathroom, I don't have any weird stuff going on, <laughs> but we whatever we this is this is where we shot it. Um, but just gave us that directional light. That is what I was looking for, my little happy spot. And then what's fun is the kid gets excited. He's like, Mom, you'll never believe it. And then like whatever, it's like you become friends, and all of a sudden you can you can photograph them a lot better. Your rule. Um, with my goal is to get a big, soft, beautiful light around you, right? So I'm constantly, this is our conversation that's happening constantly. I'm going as close as I can because as you guys know, the inverse square, what's called? Inverse square law um, is the light falls off in a very quick way. Um, and I want that soft, beautiful, big light as close as I possibly can. Now, Hannah does not want that picture, that light in the picture, because that means she's going to be editing afterwards, and that's just not happening. So anyway, we're constantly having it this. It does happen. Uh, it does happen, but that's only when I win the thing. So I say. So anyway, so what happens is. Um, I'm always trying to get a little closer, and she's always trying to back me up. And then afterwards, if she backed me up, she said, you know, label, you're right. And then by the next time, she forgot already, so she tells me to back up again. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, but this happens everywhere. So like our lights are portable, and we're, we're shooting. Um, we were shooting uh, in California, again, with a different couple over there. And we actually rented a, a yacht and went out into the, into the water. And uh, we're shooting on this like in the, on this boat, and we're shooting a couple. And Hannah's like doing her thing, and I'm like doing my thing with this like five foot octabox, like trying to hold it while the boat's moving. We almost showed you guys a video, but whatever. Um, so I'm like holding it in this thing, I'm like about to fall off into the water, and Hannah's like, "Can you move back a little bit?" <laughs> I'm like, I "I'm gonna fall in the water." She's like, "That's all right, just a little bit." <laughs> like you totally don't get it. But um, but what you have to do is you have to find you have you just have to make it happen. If your thing is light close, bring it close and figure out how to make it work. This is again how I'm always like I don't have to go to the gym because I just have to hold the light. So this is like my this is like my my. That's uh, not on the boat, but it's on the rocks. Right, huh? you guys see this is how I'm always dealing with it. Obviously, but yeah. Um, again, uh, uh, this is obviously gorgeous, and we incorporated it because it was so. But um, what we did is we said you know, first we had the the softbox, the octabox actually, up. Um, lighting the couple and we just flood them with that soft gorgeous light that we like and it was great perfect we framed them nicely in between the the greenery and we got the fountain um which i'm obviously on the other side of and good nice picture then we said hey there's a nice stone wall in the back so we should probably light that too and it draws your eyes straight to them even though there's other stuff going on so that's kind of the idea. idea, idea there is um, intentional light. There's a couple things that we're already drawing from what we've said is the in, yeah, intentional lighting, um, putting less light on the other parts of the image and now more where we want them to look. And also the um, something else in there. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we want to do. We want to if, there's, if, there, if there is something in the background that you do like, you can add some light, and that's going to I'm not getting cheat, corny, but you could shed light on whatever you like. Um, oh guys, also tell me how we're doing with timing in case we're, um, whatever's going on. Uh, keep going. OK, so recently, this is actually fun. This was taken last week. We were thinking about you guys. You guys, is, we were like totally on our mind. And we, um, we decided that we were going to take some images from our wedding specifically to show you guys how we work. So our creative lighting is our like recipe to, to create the images. And what we do is we we build from the ground up. So therefore, we're going to take our bride, we're going to introduce one light. And then we're going to see how that works, and we're going to introduce another light. I think when we first started, we just like get all the lights in, as many as you can, and like just hope that it's going to turn out. But intentional lighting, creating a photograph, is different than taking a picture. So therefore, what we did was we took, uh, we took our bride, and we actually had one of our later things is going to be uh, shooting on a seamless. But uh, we, we, we had one light that was just going to be a hair light. 
Uh, but but when, when we built it, we realized that's a gorgeous image. And then as we, and as we introduced our other light, um, we got two different images in the same, in the same moment um, that were back to back. But with, your, with creative lighting and intentional lighting, you can create multiple images in a short amount of time. And I love them both. Know your gear. Now, this is the like this is like the haven for gear. There's like any piece of gear that was ever made is like somewhere in these walls somewhere. So like this is the place to like to love your gear. But one of the things you have to know is you have to know your gear. You have to know um, even as as uh, as a photographer, you have to just know what you're dealing with. And if you're going to be photographing less than desirable places, you have to know how to use your gear in a way that's going to bring your focus where you need it and all the other things away. So. We're going to do a little bit of geek work. Three main elements you have to know. ISO, shutter speed, aperture. The, reason, right, the better you understand the settings, the more control you have in creating your images. The reason why I like that image in there is because I, I was sitting there behind the couple, and everyone was dancing, and I saw that, and I was like, ooh, like that, I want that. But like, as you know, if you shoot at 20, 200 of shutter speed, it's just not happening because it's just not enough. You need a slower shutter speed in order to capture it. So therefore, I was like, I was like, ooh, geek moment. And like, I was like, went to my thing, really brought down my shutter speed, adjusted everything in terms of the flash, and then we got to have the light with the, with the spinner situation. Um, but that's why we put it there. Quick recap of everything that we know. Right, we're going geeky here. <laughs> You have to know, just please spend your time, get to know how things relate in your camera. There's three main elements that, that make a triangle. Google it. Um, you have to know that flash only affects two of them. And um, so just, just work on that as work on your three and then work on incorporating flash. And besides Google, we were mentioning before that um, we learn, we have learned many different subjects from many different photographers. There's so many classes like what we're doing here at B&H. Um, where you can take a ton of education and really educate, educate yourself um, to become a better photographer. So we're not here to teach you your gear, but we want to point out how you can utilize it and just kind of get you a little pinch, a little taste of it. And, and again, this, that's what's so incredible about this world, is that in today's world, with these types of education, thank you so much, B&H, uh, for doing this, is that you can really become a great, a great at anything in today's world just through dedicating a little bit of time for education. Um, right, ISO is your ambient light, um, is going right, to deal with how, how your ambient comes in. Your shutter is, I, I had a realization the other day, we were talking about it to one of my students, to one of our students. Shutter speed, everyone says that's how f fast the thing goes like this. Like that's cool or whatever. But if you think about it like this, I just found it really interesting. It's how much time do you want in your image? How much time do you want in this photograph? So therefore, if it's open for 200th of a second, you're photographing 200th of a second of time. But if you, want, if you let that shutter open longer, you're actually photographing more time in this world, right? More the, that's what your shutter speed's doing. It's, 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 it's allowing you to figure out how much time you want to photograph. And obviously, how that relates to other things, the faster it goes, the more you can freeze, freeze things. The, and the slower it goes, the more you can blur things. And you have to get to know that. But it's just a fascinating idea how much time you're creating. And we'll deal with that a little bit in Flash about how you can create things um, with Flash and shutter speed. Aperture with the, um, allows, one, how much light is happening in how big your hole is, how things are coming into your camera. And it's going to affect the depth of field of your image. right? And that's going to be huge when you photograph, when you're deciding what you want to focus on. Right? Flash only affects the ISO and aperture. If I got that wrong, work with me. But generally, a flash goes at a very, very fast rate. So for it's not going to affect your shutter speed, because it's happening so fast. Did I get this right? Oh, I just got a <laughs> approval. It's very good. So, um, so it goes so fast, you're just not going to be able to. It's not going to affect your shutter speed. So therefore, that's a variation that you can work with. So um, we have two versions of our first wedding. One was. Uh, the first wedding we actually did. Should I tell that story? Um, <laughs> just the, no, I'm going to leave that one for now. One was the first wedding we ever did on our own. The second was the first wedding that Label will tell you is the first wedding, which was like our first big one. We actually got paid like a, you know, a real number. Um, we, uh, sort of funny story how we got it, but I think that everyone who's done a wedding has that 
um, their version of the story. But um, I heard from a, I heard from someone else. They they recommended us. They said they, whatever number they were. I think they whatever number there was. They said uh, they're they're paying whatever twenty eight hundred dollars or whatever for photography and videography. So he called me. So he said, "How much do you charge?" I said, "We charge twenty-seven hundred dollars for photography video, whatever the number was." But it was like right under the other guy. So the guy says, "Okay, book." So anyway, so that's how we got our first wedding. So with, technique. Right, with with video. Right. So it's our big wedding. We have photo. We have video. It's a, uh, it's one of those places where it's like supposed to be really nice, but it's kind of not. Um, which means that there's redeeming elements, but it's also got some like really weird stuff. You're supposed to take pictures in front of like green fake trees, I don't know. Um, so this is before we're solid with our equipment. And I'm totally not the geek in the family and um, or in the business or in anything else. And these two lenses are kind of similar, right? Like, I think they're almost the same size. Maybe the 85 is a little taller than the, mm -hmm. than the 28. And I loved the 85. That was my first like go-to portrait that I, I always used that. Um, now I haven't touched an 85 in uh, many years. I'm not sure how long, but two, three, I don't know, a lot of years. Um, so they're a little bit similar, and I always use the 85. And we had another guy with us, a uh, photographer, who was just kind of hanging out with us, maybe assisting a little bit. And he brought along his 28, which I'd never seen before. I've never used one before. I don't know anything about it. And I picked up the lens, started photographing them, and I was like, why do I have to get so close? This is really strange. And I just had no idea what was going on, but I, just, I realized that I had to keep getting closer and closer. It wasn't framing the way I expected with my 85. Little did I know I was shooting with a 28, and it doesn't create exactly beautiful portraits when you get in their face. <laughs> but you have to know your gear. So anyway, so practically, we actually did do some nice stuff afterwards. But, um, but just know your gear. Obviously, you're not going to do that mistake. But the better you know your gear, the more you're going to be able to create as opposed to just take. Um, OK, so this is not a, a bad image. But you see that in the back, I need like one of those lasers. But um, in the back, there, it's a, a hotel. So it is pretty. But there's, um, they had like little, it's the courtyard. So they had little bistro chairs by each um, room. And then the air conditioning units with the iron gates around them, which is functional but not pretty. And here, you know, it's it's sort of out, and it's not the focus of the image. But now that I pointed it out, you're all looking at it. Um, <laughs> but here, I was able to kind of get rid of it. I obviously moved over, and um, we also used our focal length. Uh, I didn't check it, but I'm assuming that this, this was a 70 to 200. I'm assuming that this was probably around 70. This was probably around 200. Um, and when you go for your further, focal, your longer focal length, you're going to compress your background even more. So in addition to moving over, um, we had that. And we kind of got rid of the, the stuff in the back without Photoshopping it. <laughs> When I'm shooting an event, um, a lot of times what I want to do is I want to make you feel like you're right there. So I feel like one of the ways to do that is a really low aperture. And what happens is everything kind of blurs and you kind of focus on exactly what's going on. So we have different roles when shooting. Um, shooting a wedding in terms of the reception or in terms of the ceremony, I'm very involved in up close. And my wife, and Hannah shoots from further back on a much longer lens. I create, I have to get everything that, like everything, and then my wife gets um, details and motions and things like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking that, um, taking that lens and getting a very shallow um, focal length. Shoot on the 35. I either shoot on the 35 1.4 or the 50 1.2, and what happens is I can focus on my couple and kind of blur everything else so you feel like you're alone together with them. Again, this, was, uh, this next image was, there was nothing really going on around, but what I wanted to do was just focus on her so you fill the frame with her, um, really, like I think this was a, uh, an 85, just as low as it can possibly go. And um, with enough light and, and direction, you can have a beautiful image without anything else going around. Um, OK, so remember the place with the really the redeeming quality is the chandeliers. Here it is again. It's another couple. Um, and we knew that we wanted to create something for them that was extra special. And we knew that that place has 
beautiful chandeliers. So we know our gear. We know that the cameras can do something kind of fun. Um, so we decided we wanted to play with double exposures. So the 5D Mark III has the option to do double exposures. So what we did was we created a silhouette from, from, from earlier portraiture and then made a double exposure with that same um, chandelier that we like to incorporate into the images from that wedding. We just grabbed the, por the silhouette that we wanted to use and then went around with, uh, you, you basically choose the image, go around in the hall looking for that second and you can frame the second one in it on the camera and see what's going to happen um, with that. So this is, again, not Photoshop. I don't know why I keep telling you, but I just think it's so cool that I didn't have to open it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, just knowing your gear. Remember, this is guys knowing your gear. So this was for photographing a nice place. But um, it was really dusk. And it was like, it was like really getting, getting darker and darker and darker. And I had my little five-foot octobox next to them. And I wanted to photograph the experience, but I also knew that, um, that I didn't have much time. So I wanted to get two images that were that were that stood stood apart, but I didn't have the t much time to, to do it. So the better you know your gear, the faster you can just move. So here is a click of just a few buttons. We went from shooting, um, getting that ISO, getting that light in, um, at, a, at a very very low power. I think it was at the lowest power it could go, and then just zooming that pro photo up to be as powerful it could go, adjust the aperture to hit it. All of a sudden, I'm at f you know. 32, but we have that same image within moments. I think these, these two images are back to back in terms of file same numbers. Exact same pose. Right. This is our gear list in case you're wondering. Um, we, we did whatever. You guys know what this stuff is, but I figured you guys want to know uh, what we're using. Um, in my mind, just we keep it as basic as possible. We're not gear guys. I mean, it happens to me now we love our gear, but uh, we try to just stay as simple as possible and um, that's what we do. Our love, though, is light. This is what changed our world um, in terms of in terms of being able to. We used to use a bunch of speed lights on you know these like rigs where you can put a bunch of speed lights, and I still love them and I still have them. Um, but it was always a little bit cumbersome. And then one day I, we were going this California trip, and I said, Hana, we're gonna we're gonna like like I want to buy this like portable light that they came out with this pro photo company, and she's like. <laughs> She's like, we no. Have, we have lights. She's like, I don't need that. Like, we have lights. And I was like, I was like, but, but. She's like, but what? And I was like, I just bought two, <laughs> right? I just, I just bought two. She's like, what are you crazy? And I was like, if we don't like it, we'll turn it. Like, we, if we don't like it, we'll return so it. I relented. I was like, oh, okay, we'll try. Well, it. Yeah, right, right. That's the beauty of VNH, if you know, right? So we tried it. We go out to California, and my wife, who does not like gear at all, like is like allergic to buying gear. Um, <laughs> when she came back, she said, "Label those lights are good." So that's where we started our 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 our, our now, journey with now Profoto. Little, now I'm a little spoiled. Right. So now, so like you know, if we don't have like I showed up to the other day and I didn't have my lights, and I was like, "What am I gonna do? Like, what am I?" I was like, "Oh, you have to be a photographer. Like, you have to figure it out." Know, know your gear. Right. Know your gear and figure it out. So I actually, uh, my both my cameras were out of commission, and I had my backup camera and I my whatever was going on with that, uh, I didn't have my lights with me. So I was shooting with like my my backup body and a speed light and just bouncing off the walls. And I, I was like, how am I going to do this? I said, Label, you're an idiot. Like, figure it out. Like, you're going to teach a class called Figure it Out. Figure it out. <laughs> so I had so much fun. And I was like, all of a sudden, I was like, I was like in, I was like my happy place. I was like shooting and like, and just bouncing. I put the, the I put my, um, my zoom on it as, as far as I could go to 200 or whatever. And I was bouncing off the first wall. And I was really getting great images. It was really a challenge, which was fun. But anyway, this is our, our lighting gear. We, we, you know, this is what we're using. For fun and geeky, we also really like to use the spider uh, holsters, for which label usually wears. But I'm starting to take it, and I was like, "Oh, this is kind of nice. I like it." I, I'm always like telling people what they do, and like now, like my wife has my thing, and I'm like, I'm constantly taking the camera, and going like this, like <laughs> like this. People are like, look, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I was like, I got it. Hold on one second. Like, oh, she took it again, <laughs> right? She took it again. But anyway, so but also um, the um, the hand strap. And we're totally not selling anything. For the hand strap, if um, I'm shooting the 70 to 200, it's a big, long, heavy lens. Um, I like you gotta have a hand strap with that one. It's My wife said, I, "We got the can lens." I was like, "Here, we're using this lens from now on." She picked it up. She said, "No, we're not." <laughs> I said, "Yes, we are." She said, "This is things nuts. I'm not. I'm not. That's heavy." I said. You're going to use it. She said, I'll try it. And then she, now that's basically one of the lenses we use most. Good. So 
um, change your perspective. There's a whole uh, element to what that could mean, and you can interpret it however you want because we interpret it a few ways. Um, ah, so, so we'll get in. We'll get into a few different ways, but you guys can like get excited about what perspective might be. Perspective. This is this is you, right? This is totally, totally you. It's your perspective, and this is what this is this is what creates your images. And when I was young, I always presumed that like the world looks this way. It looks how it looks, and however I see the world is how everyone else sees must be how everyone else sees the world also. And when I first picked up a camera, I started to realize that not everyone sees the world that way I see it. And I was like, I could focus on certain things, and I could create sort of compositions. And when I'd show someone, they say, Well, I didn't see that. Like I didn't see that. And I would say, well, you take the camera. And, like, and uh, they would take it, and I would be like, well, I didn't see that, right? And all of a sudden, I realized that my world was a world that was just for me. We may see a lot of the same things, but, like, but it's not the same thing as you see. And that is... You that realized was, when you married me, right? Oh, well, forget about that. <laughs> my wife sees things uh, like, like totally, and it, to me, it's, like, it's, a, it's a pleasure to know that there's more beauty in the world than I even know about. Right? The world is more beautiful than I even realize because there's so many things that I don't see that you're going to see. There's certain things that I'm going to see that you, you are not going to see and unless, I, unless I can show you through my images. And, um, and then there's my side. We're two people. And we have our different perspectives, like Label saying. So um, I told you that I went to Parsons School of Design, which is a unique place in that for college, it's label makes fun of me that my math class was purple plus green or something like that. Like we all took math, you know, so like the requirements, like my wife was like purple plus blue equals like red or whatever. Like that's like, that's like not it. <laughs> whatever. We have a five year old and the other day he had a blue cup with a, with a yellow straw or whatever. What do you say? Yeah, he, yeah, he took a blue drink and a yellow straw and he drank it and he was like, Mommy, blue and green, uh, blue and yellow makes green. I was like, that's incredible. Like, it's a five-year-old kid, and he's like, that's how I learned in college. That's Hannah's kid, <laughs> but, right? This is what we went to school for, right? So. Um, so that being said, my point about that is that it's a visual place. It's a visual school. And my mind works creatively. I do not have a photographic memory, like um, a very few people are blessed with. but. Um, I do have a visual mind, so if you want to teach me something, it helps to show me, um, or draw it, or uh, give me a picture, or whatever it's going to be, a video. Uh, video tutorials are way faster and easier to understand than words and words and words. <coughs> I actually got an email recently that was really interesting because it was from one of the companies I work with, and they said, blah, 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 this didn't work, blah, 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 blah. If you're a visual person, you can click here. And I was like, oh, I can click there. <laughs> because, but the thing that they did wrong was it should have been like a picture that said, if you're a visual, click here. <laughs> um, I would have noticed it faster. Um, but my point is that I was recently learning with um, Joey Coleman, who talks about turning customers, uh, turning customers into fans in the first 100 days. That's his class. Um, and his, his kind of uh, workshop. Um, and he said something that I never realized before. He said that he was talking to creative people, and he said, you're a creative, and you see things visually. Not everybody sees things like that. They see uh, like lines, or they hear words, or like, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, well, what do you mean? If I describe a room or if I, just, if I explain to them what it's going to look like on the wall when I hang up their wall porch dirt, they, they don't know like, how it's going to look over their bed? I don't get it. I could just picture it there. So um, just for fun, there's a vision for more of being a visual person and having that perspective of, of creativity, is, which I, th I you know many photographers, I think, have that. Um, and we have to realize that other people may not have that, and you have to give it to them. So um, we were recently in a house where there was, it's an older style house. There's two front rooms, like the first room, and then you go around and you're in the second room, which is, I don't know, maybe like the parlor and the dining room. And um, the wall was being opened up where there was a fireplace in between. So it was going to be one big room. Um, 
So like this is in that house. It's not that room. But so Label goes to the house. The, the wall's down. Label goes to it, and he was like, "Connor, you're never gonna believe it. It's huge. <laughs> it's like so incredible. It's so big. You gotta see it." And I go there. I'm like, "Oh, I'm so excited. I got to see the room." And I went there, and I was like, "Label, it's exactly like I pictured." <laughs> Just like I thought it would be. Right. From my world, it was like this. Like, and my wife was like, "Yeah, it's, yeah, that's exactly how I thought it was gonna look." I wasn't surprised. It didn't look bigger than I thought. It was just like, I, I got it. I visualized it. I knew how it was gonna be. But some people right. don't see it that way. Change your perspective. Right. So the goal is change your perspective. Find things that are happening that you see that other people don't see, and those are gonna be the gifts that you're gonna give to your clients. Here we were sitting, we were doing an engagement session, and we, and, and we weren't allowed to take the boat out. But I really wanted to feel like we were sitting in the middle of, of nowhere. The lake. And we were like really like working on like how we're going to. So I realized, wait, no one knows that we're photographing from a dock, right? Well, how do you know that, right? So therefore, what we did was we, we created an experience that they could be anywhere. They could be anywhere floating in, in, floating in the middle of you know, anywhere. Um, but through your perspective, and you're very specific cropping. Right, very specific. And that's what you do. That's, that is you. You're going to create for them something that is kind of timeless and, and, and you almost don't even know that you're there. Same thing here. I really wanted to do this look when I was there. This was actually first. Um, but they wouldn't let me on the, on the dinghy when we were out of, off of the, thank you. Um, they wouldn't let me off of, on the dinghy when we were out of the harbor because it was too choppy, the waters. But I really wanted to have this look like that in the middle of the ocean. Uh, but we just, we worked on it. I was actually sitting here on one of these things that actually was Photoshop. Don't tell anyone. Um, you see, that's my reflector. Um, but um, lighting them. But I really wanted to do it like that. But you know, you take what you can. Um, you have to change your perspective. Obviously, you can't get a better place to shoot than this. So we're shooting, having a great time, and doing one of these relationship sessions that we that we love to do. And you know, it's gorgeous, and the sunset's happening. It's like going down and going down and going, and then like it really goes down, and like it gets darker, and then gets black. And like, what are you going to do now, right? So thank you so much. Best wife. So, um, so. So as it's going down, we're we're like, well, if only we could light the cliffs in the back, that would be great. <laughs> but it's a little far away. Right, you're gonna like go and like. Kind of too big. <laughs> right. So what we decided to do is, uh, this was as you see a huge cliff. We wanted to tell the same story, but now it's black, so they can't really involve too much more of the scene. So we decided is we sent kind of up the 200, 300 foot cliff or whatever it was, um, to the very top. And we shot in a bird's eye, which gave you the same sort of experience. Um, but it gave us the ability to fill the frame in a, a way. Experience. A new experience. to fill the frame in a, right? So here shooting, I'm standing here right, right there lighting them. Here you got the full experience of what was going on without just a black abyss. Um, and he gave you a new perspective on what's happening. So don't be scared to climb the mountain. Don't be scared to do whatever you're going to do to get that shot. Even though it, you know, we had to say, like, OK, this is what we want to do. So now it's going to take us 10 minutes for me to walk back up. We used our phones to communicate because it's however many feet down. Th there's no way you could even yell to each other. Um, but the pro photo trigger still worked. Yeah. I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> so you have one softbox. Yeah, so I have my giganto situation that's, that's right here out of frame. Um, and, and filling in there, and then letting the light fall off as it, as it goes. Um, so we are all about move yourself. You should move your couple. You should move your camera. You should move your lights. You should move your feet. And the point is that you can change it. That's your perspective. You can change it continuously. You can do one like this, one like that, one like that, one like that. And keep changing it, moving it, and you'll get variety. You'll get interest. Um, and I always make a joke sometimes with my clients that um, if I'm walking back and forth a lot when I'm taking their picture, I'll say, like, see, I'm using, I'm like, keep going, right? That's because I'm using my legs as a zoom. Because I'm, you know, if I decide to use a fixed lens for photographic purposes, then you just walk. Like, I don't know why people forgot about that. <laughs> 
And one of the things when you're using the 7200, is great, you can get tight, middle, wide, tight, middle, wide, but you find yourself a little bit stagnant, you stay there, because it's just that easy. So therefore, when you stay, when we found that when you go onto a fixed lens, or when you challenge yourself to just fix it, even if, it's, if, even if, you're, um, even if it is a zoom lens, you give yourself the opportunity to just really walk around and you see things that you would have never seen. Your job as a photographer is to find perspectives that enhance your location and represent the couple or event as best you can. They're getting, they're, you're in an ugly place, but there's ugly and then there's how you can make ugly. So therefore what we're gonna do is you're gonna do the best you possibly can to make it look good. When they come in, they know where they got married. They know where they were photographed, but it's your job to create something that at least gives them the emotion of how they felt when emotion how they felt and not how they were. And um, I think this might be a good time that I want to share. One of the reasons that we started wedding photography is because that I did not, uh, neither one of us, were happy with our wedding photographs. Um, not because they're bad, but they are. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think there's levels of that. Like, you know, it could be kind of just unhappy with one thing or another thing, and your wedding didn't go exactly how you thought, so therefore you have emotions with it. But um, after all of this time looking back at it, I, we basically figured out that one of the main elements was we weren't comfortable, and we weren't photographed in a way that made us feel comfortable, and therefore, you know, label looks goofy, and I look dorky, and like <laughs> she told me go like this, so I did, but I felt funny, and I thought like, well, she's a photographer, I must look okay, and I got the picture back, and I was like, it doesn't. <laughs> um, so, so I'm bringing that in in a, in a couple ways. So one is that we really decided to give, hopefully, give our couples beautiful wedding images so that they could feel good about it, so they could enjoy the pictures, so that they could have the memories, so that they could have the good emotions that are represented in those photographs that they can enjoy. And that's what really photography is, and wedding photography specifically, is that um, no matter the location that it's in, the wedding could be in this room. But you need to show the emotion, the happiness, the good feelings that they had on their wedding day, because that's what it was. It was something good. Um, and that's, that's really your job. That's your job to make it look good, make it feel good, and that they should go like, wow. This was incredible, and it, it could be their memories are better, it could be their memories are worse, and you made it even better. Um, but you are really providing them with something so special that they come in after the wedding. We share the images with them for the first time, and they go, "Oh, I didn't remember they weren't there, or, or that they were there, and um, hopefully that they were." Mm -hmm. And um, like, I didn't know you were. How did you even get these Chopa pictures? The, 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 the ceremony, sorry. Right. Um, how did you get these pictures? Like, you weren't there. We were like, yeah, we were right there. Right, you gotta be quiet, you gotta be pleasant, and that's really one of the things you're coming in. You're photographing them on the most special day of whatever's going on in their life right now. So therefore, you have to be pleasant, quiet. You don't have to, you can do anything you want. Um, I recommend highly being pleasant, quiet, and um, we often are told that we don't even, like, you're just a piece of furniture. And when they show up, they say, like, how did, they give them an opportunity of seeing things when you're directing it, it's during, during portraits, you're gonna have to direct a little bit more. But during an event, our vision is that you just, you're here to document it, and to document it in a beautiful way through your perspective. Uh, so we try not to invade on the wedding as much as possible. Same thing under the, chup, under the, um, under the we always have a, Jewish weddings, we have like a canopy. Um, so anyway, so changing perspective a little bit, turning around, blurring everyone out, father and daughter, the emotion, you gotta just capture the emotion. And there's the, oh wait, is that me? I was gonna say there's like the Uncle Bob, but it could be me, I'm not sure. No, it's not you. It's not me? Nope. <laughs> okay, isn't that a cool photograph, guys? Check it out. That's, mm -hmm. is it great? Like the painting? Right, they didn't like it either. Uh, this was at their house, and they like, and I was like, can I use that painting? They're like, I hate that painting. My aunt's coming, she made it for me, and I just gotta, oh. If you're watching this, your aunt's not watching this. Okay, um, so anyway, so I have to put it up every time that we, every time that she comes, we have to put it up. So my wife said, can I use it, right? Change your perspective, you can photograph on anything. Took it off the wall, place it down, beautiful place to photograph your rings. Um. 
right? Like I, I mentioned before that a lot of times beautiful things are vertical. Sometimes they come off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, right? There's not much going on. Find that thing that you can create for them that's going to be a gift for them, right? Um, here we have a very, here we have a very, um, it's funny, we always have the light on the other side. That's, I'm always on. Here we have a, um, a big light um, photographing here. There wasn't much going on, but I wanted to give her something that was kind of transcendent, so therefore we photographed her here. But I knew, knowing our gear, that's going back to know your gear and knowing your perspective, I knew that whatever is going to light her, she was going to be the focus, and everything else is going to go into black. So therefore, if she's still light in the mirror, you're going to get that also. So therefore, we got this multi-dimensional situation out of an image that, um, that otherwise was, wasn't in the most beautiful place. Changing your perspective doesn't mean that it was bad and you're making it good. It means you're giving, it could also mean that you're giving variety. Here we're shooting um, on rolling hills. The right, the image on the left is beautiful. Um, the image of the, of the family is just a different perspective. And therefore, you can get variety because you're going to be giving your clients these images. You have to know that one set is beautiful, but if you can vary it and show them different things, you're giving them more and more to, to, to cherish. Right, this was that wedding on the, on the, airport. at the airport. So he was like really nervous and like I said like, are you okay? Like what would make you feel better? And he was like, oh, he owned the airport? Just, okay. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like he was at the, he owned the airport. So I said, well, what would make you feel better? He's like, I'd really like to fly. I said, don't you own the airplane? He said, yeah. So I said, so let's go, <laughs> right? Let's change our perspective, let's get out of here. So therefore, we go in this like tiny little situation. We're like photographing, having a, right? This is our little plane that we're photographing in, and and I'm and I'm like we're totally focused on our perspective and a, and I'm thinking about lighting. My wife's thinking about composition. All of a sudden, he goes in for landing. We look down and realize we're in a tiny airplane with this kid, and I don't even know if he's any good. <laughs> like you know, like, I don't even know if this guy's good. <laughs> so anyway, so like so then we kind of freaked. But until that point, um, we're having a great time. Uh, just in terms of lighting, we were in love with light, so we, we gave them the thing. So anyway, this little thing, I, I, it was before we were using Profoto, so I just had my little handhold, um, speed you know, light. speed light from, it was 600, whatever, so they speak to each other. I was just bouncing off the beginning of, that's why I'm holding like this, I'm not doing a selfie, although it looks like it. I'm just photograph. I'm bouncing <laughs> like this way, so it comes back at us. And, um, and you see how small the plane is. Some of them are two-seaters and some four, so this is actually a four-seater. I'm not sure if that's the one we were in, but uh, that's, they kind of set up one as a display at the wedding. And they were um, taking people up. It was really cool. They were like taking Yeah, they also had rides. So um, that's obviously not an ugly place. But like I said you before. have to find, but, you know, photographing in a little box that big, you have yeah. to figure out your perspective. But you it's have to tiny. Not, you have to not only show uh, him, but you have to figure out how to tell the whole story in, in one image. And even getting, like, you know, there's not much choice in uh, composition either. Cause we're just right there. Okay, now, hitting the road. Hitting the road is a huge tool. Hit the road means if you're, the best solution to photographing in an ugly hall is just leave, right? Get out of there. Figure out a way to get out. So talk to the client before, and this is really my wife's specialty. This is Hannah's specialty. Talk to, plan with the client. Figure out times in their wedding that they can just leave. And then you have, then your world is endless. You can do anything. You have no boundaries. Um, this, this was really, really revolutionary to me to realize that as, a, as an artist, I don't have to be stuck with what they give me. Let's, let's hit the road. Let's pan a little more time. It's great for you because one, you get the opportunity to create images that are like mind-blowing and otherwise you wouldn't get. It also gives, it's a little bit more time in the wedding, so therefore you get paid a little more. Um, and you have to be thinking about how to create images that are not going to be only good for them, but you have to think about yourself. You have to photograph for your own portfolio. And um, th one of the best ways is just hit the road. Um, so this is one of those instances where we left. Um, this, about it? Yeah, this is the same couple as we did before at the wall um, with, with, with that light. But, oh, right. Um, basically, they just had a friend with a beautiful estate, and like it was just one beautiful place after the other. So uh, An estate like they have full-time landscapers. Mm -hmm. Full-time. Multiple, like a crew. <laughs> like when we showed up, there was a forklift, and it had a tree on it. And so I said, what's that? They said, well, we're moving over there. So they took like a big rug and went in front of the forklift and placed it down, and there was like a bunch of workers, and it drove like four feet, and then they took the next they rug. They had like a, a what? 
like rug or whatever it was, or it was a a, wood. It was a big flat something. Yeah, and they would like go. It was like uh, they like, wouldn't drive on the grass. It was just incredible to watch. So anyway, so they had it was just a really great place. But you wouldn't unless we started the conversation, it wouldn't have ever happened, right? Do you do you have any place that would be your ideal place? Yeah, I have this person with like acres and acres of gorgeousness. Okay, great, let's go. Right, same thing. Had a house that was really fun. Like the hall they're getting that they're getting married in is is, is whatever it, it, it is. Um, so therefore, but she had, I said, do you have any friends with nice houses? So she said, I do. And I said, I said, are they nice, clean, open spaces? Yes. Great. Let's go there. Right. Change your change your pers uh, hit the road. Also, you know. That was at their house too. Right. That was at their house. So we're we're we're, we're photographing their house, and it gives you an opportunity to shoot in, in a location that's just not where you have to be. Again, you know, some places might have that, but where they got married just didn't have it. So therefore, you got to um, go ahead. OK. So um, this is obviously an engagement session. But um, we want to build your ideal client. That's what kind of one of the things we're talking about here is before you have your ideal clients and you're given um, something else, then you want to get to the place where you're working with people who you want to continue working with. Um, well, you take care of them. You're also uh, simultaneously allowing yourself to create a portfolio that will allow you to do this over and over. You want to keep doing what you love. You want to give to them, and you want to fulfill your potential at the same time. Um, so remember the next one. This, this client was, you want to tell the story? Yeah. Okay. So um, with them, they for their engagement session, we do it very often. Um, and for the wedding, that's another alternative, right? So, um, so for their engagement session, we said, you know, what's significant to you? What do you guys like to do together? Where do you spend time together? Anything that's related to your relationship. And so for them, their first date was in an ice cream shop. But which ice cream shop was it? But like a Dunkin' Donuts. And they're like, I but not only was it Dunkin' Donuts, but it was like one of those really bad, ugly ones. <laughs> so I was like, great, ice cream is fun, and that looks good. Dunkin' Donuts, not so much. Let's skip that and look for a pretty ice cream shop. So keeping in mind location and timing and where they lived and where we were and um, just all the different elements that we wanted to incorporate, we were looking for a nice, uh, we means I, actually in this case. <laughs> um, I did the scouting for them, right? And I found, um, I was looking for a nice ice cream place. I didn't find ice cream, but I found a bakery. Um, and I said, this is the perfect look that we want. Um, so that's where we ended up going was this cute bakery. It didn't really matter that it wasn't ice cream. I think that the point was that it's this like type of feelings and emotions that they had when they first met and it was with food and it was whatever. I, I should really ask them what they think, how it relates, but I think it relates. Um, so that's what we did and we bought them ice cream, whatever it's called. We bought them cake and coffee and everybody's happy with cake and coffee. So. Um, Good. So then here's another one. Um, in this one. This is the first time we hit the road. This is a little bit different. Um, whereas in the couple before where they were on the estate, that one was before where they had a reveal. The one with the house um, just before was also a reveal. This couple did not have a reveal, right? Correct. So um, it's nighttime because it was after their ceremony. And we hit the road. We went actually a 10 minute drive away from from their wedding hall, which in the Jewish weddings is like super unusual. Uh, I know that when it's not a Jewish wedding, that's like so normal, it's so easy. But um, for them, it was a big, big deal. And we actually set up having a third photographer. We set up a photo booth that he ran while we went out. And we planned it like, OK, it's going to be 10 minutes there, 10 minutes back, and we're going to spend maybe 50, 20 minutes there tops, um, something like that. But um, so that was in Prospect Park, Brooklyn. Um, something else about that? Oh, so here's another oldie for you. Um, if you're not getting the type of venue or the type of look or the type of bride that you want, all you have to do is create it. And um, nowadays, this is, is very popular to just put together a styled shoot. And there's a lot of different ways you can um, utilize and take advantage of that. 
you can connect with vendors that you want to be in the same circles, that they have the same ide ideal client that you have. Um, so that could be your florist, your caterer, your venue, uh, dressmakers, and then all of the other accessories, hairstylists, makeup artists, and the list goes on. Uh, I don't know if I said florists, but all the different wedding vendors that you want to work with, that you think that they also are reaching the same clients that you're reaching and or would like to reach and reach out to them and say like hey let's put together a shoot and um, I'm gonna give you the photographs because you have that in your hands as a photographer everyone loves beautiful photographs of their stuff they don't have it they're taking their iPhone and doing it wherever your opportunities that you can give people gifts that they cannot get your images are gonna take they know that they know they need their images so therefore when you connect with them saying I love your stuff I'm going to make it look better than you ever had it is a great sales pitch to work with other vendors and start working in places that you want to work. So I didn't even go that far and I just did like a really easy simple version and I took my husband's cousin and uh, friends that know how to do hair and makeup. I bought an old vintage dress online that was really inexpensive. I, I couldn't find it in my old email but um, I'm guessing it was like, I don't know, not more than $45 or something like that. Um, and the vendor that I did connect to was a florist, and that bouquet is really beautiful. Um, this is in the very, 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 very beginning. So what people would say is, great, you're a wedding photographer. I would say, yeah, I'm a wedding photographer. They say, great, let me see some of your work. I'd say, uh, <laughs> you know, I give, you know, yeah. So anyway, so what I did was I created, we created a stylized shoe. I said, we just got to do it. We got to show people what we're doing. So we created this. And then what we would say was people would say like, so like, let me see your work. And I'd show them and say, oh, when did they get married? <laughs> so first I'd be like, like whatever. But then I realized I don't have to say anything. I said, oh, this is actually a stylized shoot we put together for a lot of our vendors and, um, and to show off a lot of the work. And they're like, oh, wow. You're like, so it gives you the opportunity to show what you want to do, obviously six years ago. Um, but it shows you what you want to do, and you have complete creative control. So this is a dress that I decided to buy. It was inexpensive and, um, and easy. And you know, you got your birds flying in the back. It's great. And you see actually on her arm, there's a rip in the dress. That's at the beginning of the shoot. By the end of the shoot, it was like torn in pieces. It was really just like an old vintage. But it got us a ton of work, so that's what matters. Yeah. You want to quote me? <laughs> Label said, in today's world, you can do anything. No requirements or experience necessary. Let's see what you can make. And I think you guys all know that technology is so available and so affordable even um, that uh, technology and education that you can really just get out there and try stuff. And I'm telling you guys, this is like the solution. I, and again, when you're taking a bride and groom out, this is like you have a free pass to go almost anywhere. Almost. We got stopped a few times. Uh, but basically, wherever you go, you're, all you have to say to people is, you're like photographing people looking at you like, no, they're getting married. And they're like, oh, congratulations. And like all of a sudden you have like a free pass to go. We were once on train tracks and the cop didn't go for it. He, didn't, he just didn't go for it. Uh, but anyway, but most other times is you can go really anywhere. Either make your plan and, um, and, and ask or I didn't, you didn't hear from me. Don't ask, just do it and then figure out you know, if, you can, if you can make it happen. Uh, but that's really what gave us a really big inspiration is that you don't have to stop for anything. You can create it um, as, as, as beautiful as you want. This is our, one of our favorite places to go, um, which we don't get to do all the time because it's not something that you would do at every wedding, but we bring the studio with us. We realized one of our clients was a really special girl. You saw her earlier with a ring, um, with a ring on the on the on the on the. Not her. Just her. Her ring was on the painting. painting. But she's a makeup artist. Very like uh, she's a she's a great make like very just fashionable, sweet, incredible person. And she really she she loved our work and and really invested in us. And I said, Miney, um, if you want me, like let's figure out. And she was getting married married in the hall. She really didn't want to. I said, let's brainstorm. I said, I'm going to create something just for you, just for you. And we were like thinking like what we're going to do. So I was like racking my brain because she really deserved it. She's like just like a, they're just a wonderful couple. And I and she, you ever notice that when people believe in you and, and invest in you, you like want to give them more because they, because 
like they believe in you, so you believe in you, and you really go further. So all of a sudden, this brainstorm. I said, we're shooting in this place that we don't really want to be in. Why don't we create, and we took them out of the engagement session, had a great time in the city. I said, let me just like shoot an editorial, just like I was shooting in the studio. Let me just like shoot an editorial, beautiful thing like I was shooting in a magazine. So I called her and I said, I have a crazy idea. I'm sure you're going to love it. She said, what is it? So I tell her, we're going to shoot basically a magazine cover of, of you, and we're going to bring a seamless backdrop, back, uh, seamless paper, and we're going to photograph it just like I would photograph anyone else in the studio. And, um, she, and she loved it. So then I was like, oh man, like what am I gonna do now? Like I just pitched this idea and like she said yes. So like now I have to figure out how to shoot this way. Um, but we did it and we picked out a 107 inch um, gray seamless and we practiced a few times at the house so we can get our lighting right. And that's, own, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's understanding creative lighting. And what we created was really, really, really special. Right now we're in, you don't know where we are. We could be anywhere, but their emotion is what, is what you know, their emotion, the light, the composition, and you could be anywhere. We could be in the most beautiful place or we could not, but it's that same look as the happy spot we had earlier, um, but it's portable. You also have one of the fun parts, difficult parts, and it, like it, when you're shooting and seamless, when you bring your studio with you, you basically have to have, you have to really have a very good understanding of your, um, your composition, of your lighting. You're posing, uh, you're and, po your lighting. You're posing, posing really and you're posing. And you're posing, really you're posing your lighting because it's a blank slate. So now you're creating artwork. You're creating a photograph. How are you going to do that? Now, the more preparation you have, the more you work on it, the more you can come in. So for us, it's, it's incredible because it's a blank slate and let's create magic. Um, but, for, but in the beginning, you have to just make sure that you know where you're going to do and what you're going to do. So what we do is we set up, uh, we like to set up four lights in different variations. And with the Pro Photo Trigger, we can just turn on and off which one we like. And we can basically just, like I like almost like look at it like cooking. You like just like create different, cook different things uh, depending on which spices you put on. So therefore, as example, so here we have one two-foot um, octobox, the OCF octobox, just from top, which is kind of like that beauty type of situation with strong cheap bones and, and kind of like directional. Right here? <laughs> Again, with that thing. Uh, right here. Then what we did was we had, um, and these were all set up at the same time, but we just turned them on. Then we brought, left that light on to keep those strong cheap bones and those features, um, and then brought in that five-foot octa, which lit up our subject to have more of a traditional, beautiful, you know, soft light that we love. And then we had one, um, we had one light, uh, on a, it was a B2 with a, with a grid on the back, just to give like a little vignette, uh, which brings your eye in. So now all of a sudden, in three seconds, or however many in a minute, you can create three different looks um, just with dialing your button. So you have to know how to set that up before, and it takes a little bit of time to set up. You have to afford more time to set up your uh, background and set up your lights, but when you do that, you now have, you could do anything. And then that, this is an example of some of what she got, but we obviously do more posing in each light situation also. Right. Um, a whole nother element I'm kind of bringing into the studio setting is that we show our couples that we care about them. Um, so why I'm mentioning that here is because like Label said that this is a seamless background. There's not much going on. It's just clean, nothing there, and you are creating now everything inside of it. So you have to be doing your job with posing. You have to be doing your job with the lighting. And those two things are going to create the image and create create the image to show off that person or that couple, right? So in that, we want to pull out emotion that's real, and we want to pull out laughter that's real, not like, oh, she made me smile, or oh, she made me put my hand up like this, like my photographer did. Um, but we want them to look genuine and happy and, and showing their true emotions. So we try, uh, and we really do care about them, but we try to show them that in many different ways. Um, we use, in photographing the couple, we use words of compassion, of understanding, knowing like where they are and um, you know how they might be feeling, um, and excitement, like, okay, now do this with your wife or uh, your husband or Mrs. So-and-so, and they just get excited because you, they just got married. So like obviously they're really excited to have just changed their entire life status. 
right? You're treating them as a human being and not as like a subject. I feel like sometimes as a photographer, like you're like, well, I'm gonna like light them up like this and I'm gonna like move them around like that. And like you forget that that's a human being. Like it's not like just, you know, it's not, it's not a, a subject of your photograph, it's a human. And therefore what happens is when you do these things, all of a sudden they feel like you're working together and we're working as a team and you, that's where we create uh, beautiful images when you make that connection. Such as this. Um, also, we just wanted to mention that the 107 inches is a decent size, but you can't usually put in like an entire family over there. Um, but you can do more than just a couple on the individuals. You could bring in the father, the mother, maybe a best friend or a sister, a maid of honor, um, a couple people. But you don't, you obviously can't do an entire family, but what you do is you do this, and in family pictures you find wherever that's going to be, your other happy spot or wherever you're forced to shoot. And um, so playing off of what we're telling you about emotion is that uh, one of the, I don't, I'm not telling you this to say like, oh, this is what I'm good at. But every time we photograph a wedding, what people tell me is that I give them a calmness that they don't otherwise have. Now, um, I don't know if I specifically have to work really hard at it because it's a little bit of um, my, I think it's just like kind of part That's of my persona. Yeah. <laughs> That's part of who I am. Yeah. But I think that even if you don't have that, that's something you could work towards if you recognize that it's important. Um, the reason that we think it's important is that we know and have been told and shared with and have seen with our own eyes that many photographers yell at people. And it's very strange. Like, you want them to look happy. You want them to remember good feelings about their images. But like, you made, you yelled? I don't get it. Um, so to like scream orders and directions and put your hand over there and like, move over and get out and let's go already. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, why would they like that? I don't know. Um, so we try to give them calm and ease, and it allows for them to be their true self, to show you who they are, um, if you kind of get to know them and play with them and have fun, um, for them to laugh, like in the image before, for them to just feel good and, and have fun with you, make silly jokes. Well, the other day, I said to the bride, um, she like wasn't really doing, you know, some people tell you they're, they're bad at smiling for pictures and then they're actually really good at it and then other people, I don't know, they do say it or they don't, but she just wasn't really smiling so much and I was like, I said some stupid joke and I was like, see how hard I have to, see how stupid I have to look for you so you'll laugh. <laughs> 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 and, um, and a lot of honesty for them to be themselves. That's kind of the same. Now again, you have to work with your personality. So like, like Khan and I are very different. When, like, I don't know, if my image is like, like decent. I'll be like jumping up and down and like telling them like incredible. And like, if my wife, if Khan takes a picture and she says like, oh, that's decent, you know it's gonna like rock your world, right? So like, say so like, wow, this is really good. I'm like, my wife doesn't like say incredible. that. She doesn't say that. Like, you know, if she says it's beautiful, then like, like just run for cover. Like this. But is I think be more interesting than that we have different ways of expressing ourselves is actually that when we do it label or I think usually him will say like oh you need to know about us that if he jumps up and down it's pretty good and if I say um, I like it then it's like incredible um, so they know what they're getting into like you know so like that they know because if I'm not being ecstatic it's actually really good and you know they understand us and then they can kind of give back to us also um, and then the last thing is also intimacy that we want them to feel comfortable showing themselves, and um, you could kind of take that word wherever you want it, but intimacy is also just the simple meaning of showing yourself, being comfortable. The relationship and the connection. Showing your relationship between each other, who you are, um, and uh, genuine. So we actually photographed them last week, um, and I think we might have like taken that extra step to say like let's do the studio because we were coming here. Right, and we wanted we wanted for you for you guys. So there was actually the same hall as the as the last one you saw that was that was on the on the seamless. And she had the same concern. And I said, listen, we're giving class next week. I said we're going to create really incredible images. And uh, so what my wife spoke to me and said, what what are your colors in your day? So she I, said we're going to be doing. And I actually asked her because um, I didn't know which color and I didn't want to. The first one was fashion gray, which is a nice like 
simple editorial look. Um, and this time I didn't want to do the same thing. Um, and then I'm going to show you we also did another one in bone, which is a nice like tan color. Um, so I wanted to do something different, but how am I going to choose? There's like a, a huge palette of colors. Um, so I said, well, what are the colors of your wedding? I'm thinking like maybe the bridesmaids dresses or um, simple, what are your flowers? So she told me light blue and light purple. Do you see any purple in there? No, I just happened to have chose blue. Good thing I did that. <laughs> uh, um, and it happens to be that we used a light blue paper, but um, going back to the light, you can, you can add lights and remove lights as you wish to make different looks. So the light blue paper can look like this beautiful medium, I don't know what you call it, aquamarine or something. Um, and just technically, the more light that you shed on the paper, the lighter it's going to go. So the closer you bring to the background, the lighter the paper is going to be. The further you bring it away and the more, less light you put on it, you can actually get a, a whole varying amount of tones from one piece of paper where you place them or where you place your light. So that's. Uh, and what was it called? Um, blue. I have to think about it. was last week, but that's, I'll think what it was called. Blue something. Foam blue? No. No. Uh, so there's them on there again. Same thing, guys. Same exact thing. Know your happy place. So you have to know your lighting. So therefore, I have my five foot, and I'm going around with him. Um, but then that's where I get excited. So I get excited. I know that if I come at a 45, it's going to create kind of a nice soft look, which is great for a bride. But for a groom, you might want to get something a little more punchy. But I don't want to go, for myself, I don't want to get like, like a, a smaller light. I want to get sill soft. So therefore, what we did was we just took the same light, rotated it around him, so therefore that same was coming more like a rim, but still a beautiful, big, soft light. So therefore, what's happening is you see that he is being photographed with that sort of light, but as I turned it, the background just almost goes into like a very, very deep blue um, intentionally to, you know, to, to create that kind of focus, edgy image. And like I mentioned, I chose the paper color to coordinate for her wedding. Same thing, we took that. A lot of, most of our images we want to stay. Again, we always feel this way that you want to like get your like, get your like base stuff down, make sure that like, sometimes we want to go straight to creative, and you go, like, wait, wait, no, like let's do our base stuff, make sure we're safe. Then once you leave your, once you get everything you need, you can leave your safe zone. So therefore we took all of our normal stuff, but then, now we have another three minutes, let's get creative. So same thing, took that light, went behind, um, illuminates the veil, and creates a much more quiet look than what the, uh, some of the other images that were happening. And also, just to mention, kind of like a behind the scenes or like a, a outtake kind of moment. Um, I kept telling Lee, "Well, I want it, I want light blue, light blue, light, label. Let's do the light blue. That's what I really wanted." And I wanted the variety, obviously, but I kept telling him, "Like, let's come on, we gotta do light blue." And we did do light blue, but these are way better. <laughs> so sometimes you don't realize that um, what you think, you know, what you think is going to be the best one is not necessarily going to be the best one. And you kind of do have to run with mistakes. Or run, This wasn't a mistake, but run with mistakes and run with alternatives and run with options and varieties. Do you guys ever find that like you're showing your work or like you're looking through your work and you think to yourself like, oh, this is like the best work I've ever done. I never want to show anything other than like this. No one's allowed to see anything past like today. And then like the next wedding comes and you think like, oh, this is it. No one's ever going to see anything before this. And that's hopefully what you guys are going to get. You're going to be taking, um, your, taking your style and going further and further to get the images that, um, that really speak to you. And that's how you know that you're growing as an artist and not just taking pictures. Now, in this studio environment, you might start to think like, well, it kind of has to be stiff. Like you're just a... Uh got this paper, so they have to just stand there and smile. They can go under the veil, but like, what else could they really do? They could have tons of fun. <laughs> this, is your, this is your canvas. So you're just having a great time. You got a guy that happens to, to know have a good time. And all of a sudden, you put on some music, and, and we're dancing, right? But that's, it. that's who he is. So hopefully, these images are the representation of who he is. And again, we have all those other beautiful images, but this is him. Right? Again, I tell a lot of clients, which is important, it's actually, it's, it's a very delicate balance. We tell everyone that we don't want to put you in like a cookie cutter thing, like this is, like I have my move, and like you're going to get my move. I'm going to smack you with my move, and you're going to, that's what I'm going to do. Like you need your move. 
but hopefully what's going to happen is you can get a little bit of feel of who they are, and then there's a blend of who you are and who they are, and that's what your images come out with. So therefore, we're still going to be shooting with our happy spot. We're still going to be shooting around. But you need to incorporate him in it also, or else you just have a very dry, dry image. So therefore, that's, you bring a lot to the table, and you allow them to bring a lot to the table. And from there, you meet in between and have a, you know, create, create beauty. So own it means take all these things and build them into yourselves. As we said before, this is a bunch of education. Take it, review it, take notes, and when you put it in yourself, sometimes like, our portraits are going to be great, but now you have to shoot every other part of the wedding and it's ugly. So what are you going to do? What you're going to do is you're going to own it. You're going to look in, you're going to use your vision to create something that's stunning. I'll, 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 one of the, our techniques is you fill the frame. Fill the frame means that as long as whatever you want to see is filling the frame, nothing else is seen. You want to fill it with, go ahead. You make it beautiful because the moments are beautiful. That my wife is supposed to say that because she, she means it. Um, <laughs> uh, but in terms of there's really beautiful things happening, you fill your frame, you own it, you decide that I'm the photographer, I'm going to take my steps and I'm going to incorporate them into my wedding, I'm going to create something beautiful. But then um, we've been talking about portraiture and in the event you can't take your happy spot with you and you can't bring your octobox, your oct yeah your octobox over everyone's head. Right, like if I time. had a, like a drone that my octobox could like fly around the wedding and only be exactly where I was shooting, like I would be, if you guys know how to do a drone like that, I'm gonna hire you, like that's, that's it. Uh, but you can't, and again, it's offensive, it's gonna smack someone, it's gonna be a difficult situation, so therefore you cannot bring your happy spot with you. So we fill the frame. Which is very sad, <laughs> oh. right, which is sad, but it's a life reality. So what you do is you fill your frame. Right? You create happy moments. It might not be the prettiest hall, but now his smile lightens your heart, hopefully. Right? It's the moments that happen that, 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 that are created that you, right now it doesn't matter what's happening where the ugly hall is. Now all you feel is what's happening with a father and a daughter. Right? A sister getting, watching her sister get married. Right? You're filling your frame. Your artistic ability is, is to just own it. Things are happening. Photograph them. Right? Here we have, I'm going to show you in a second, right? This, to me, speaks worlds because it's, it's, she's, she's actually, I don't know if you know, she, um, during, under, the, under the canopy they drink wine, there's a whole ceremony. So here she's drinking the wine uh, that was blessed under the ceremony. Um, but what's really happening? Right? That. Right? That's not pretty. That's very difficult to photograph. It's a very stupid red thing that casts <laughs> red shadows everywhere. So you have to work, you have to own your lighting. But what you could do is you have to be able to create images like that in places like that, right? We're going to be photographing in a, in a hall, right? And this, is in a, this is in a synagogue, right? There's just not much going on. And I, again, I'm bouncing light through a room coming out. So what do you do? Had we not used lighting, this would look even worse. Right. What do you do? You can fill your frame, right? Now you don't know where she is. She could be anywhere, but she's having a great time. She actually just got back from the hospital. She was dehydrated and had food poisoning and uh, couldn't stand up by herself. Meaning she got there, but she was like in a rough place. By the end, she was dancing, having a great time. But you have to be able to own it. You have to be able to create something in any situation. Um, this is going all the way back to the room where it has the nice wallpaper, and it's just um, for hanging up dresses. I decided to hang up the bride's dress. Um, what we are hiding is the door handle because it's industrial. The hinges, because those are just like monster hinges, so I put the dress over them. The room contents, which was a mess, and oh, maybe I didn't put it there. Basically, everything else in the whole place. Um, so, what, but you, what you make for your client will represent who you are and what you do, because you're showing them, this is what I could give you as a photographer, um, and this is how it can represent your day. Oh, there's every other wall. Wrong order. <laughs> Okay, um, again, this is uh, an engagement session um, from the couple that you saw earlier and could see in the room. So anyway, what they're doing is they wanted to get in their engagement session in the, in the apartment they were going to move into. They thought it would be like a very, we all thought it would be a very special moment to be able to have images of a place that you're going to start your life in. Right? But what we didn't mention was everything was a mess and they hadn't unpacked. Right? So you have to find your happy spot in, in the middle of nowhere. So this is one, this is their bedroom. We moved everything over here, created a light over here. 
there was, I'm always on that side in terms of the lighting. I'm, that's interesting. So, um, so, I'm, so I'm over here. We moved everything out of there, photographed them just here in a little happy spot. This, I'm standing outside with a f huge, outside, uh, the window. outside the window with a huge umbrella with a bunch of speed lights putting light through the window to get the way I want it. And this is a little spot in the kitchen. Now, if you want to know how you have to own it, what the place looked like, the kitchen is only five feet the wide. The kitchen, yeah, five feet wide and like, right? <laughs> but what, where we were photographing is. Huh? Oh, uh, so owning it means that although we wanted to create these beautiful images where you could say like, OK, that's my bedroom wall, right? Um, and it's gorgeous. And I could hang it up in my room, which is just like so cute. But this is where they really were. This is where we're photographing, guys. This is, uh -huh. you have to take this and you have to create that. Right? Our challenge now that we have is, now that we're shooting in more and more beautiful places, now I have to change everything that we've ever thought about. I've always had to hide what's happening. All of a sudden, we're shooting where we want to shoot, and we're, it's the exact opposite situation. How are we going to start incorporating other things into our images that are going to be beautiful? So therefore, I do do that, and we do do it. But we also are getting paid for a certain experience that, we, that, they're, that they hired Style. you for. And style. So therefore, even when we're shooting in the most gorgeous place, I'm still going for the same quiet experience. Um, you don't know. You might not know. Meaning, you don't know this is in a beautiful country club, but um, but we're just as close to that open door experience as possible, and creating the same emotional experience. And what we have to do is we have to adapt. Just like we all have to adapt, we have to adapt. But don't veer from your style, you have to own it. Because when you own it, that's what they're paying you for. When you own it, that's what feels best. And when you own it, you know that this is my work and no one else can do it. That's your last line. That's, okay. Okay. Now, guys, that's it was the biggest pleasure. This was, um, this was really a treat. My goal, as, as I mentioned before, we started off watching classes in, you know, in every element of photography. And that's how we grew. I'm still in connection with a lot of our mentors. And that's how we continue to grow now. Um, I hope that today you've gotten our seven techniques um, to how to photograph, how we go about photographing. I hope that you can take it into your own world and create beautiful images. We're creating what we like, but I'm excited to see what you guys can create. Take these, take all seven of these op, these tools into your work, and I would love if you can send us work that you guys have been using that you guys have been incorporating it would be a huge huge treat it would be an honor to be able to inspire other photographers as we've been inspired by so so many thank you